in the rain here at Old Trafford. The players, as part of the No Room for Racism campaign, they take a knee, then Anthony Taylor gets to his feet, blows his whistle, and Bruno Fernandes plays the ball back to Onana on the edge of the area, as listeners to the BBC World Service join us on Five Live as well on this wet, wet, stormy afternoon in the northwest of England. And Garnacho keeping the ball in, but running back into his own half, and then Dallow could only give it to McAllister. And now Liverpool are on the attack after Manchester United lost possession. Diaz plays it infield, but that was intercepted by Bruno Fernandes. However, Bradley, the Liverpool right back, Bradley, one of the stars of the season, the Northern Ireland international, takes the ball and gives it out towards the far side and, and Liverpool go back towards the halfway line. So it is Manchester United nil, Liverpool nil, Five Live and the World Service on BBC Sounds as well, where you'll find all of the BBC's live radio. Liverpool with Soboslai, who takes a tumble there and Maguire takes him out to the far side. Then Soboslai ends up on a heap on top of Maguire and Manchester United are able to clear it away. United here at Old Trafford, of course, in the red shirts with the white numbers, white shorts and black socks. And the ball breaks forward for Bruno Fernandes, who plays it through the middle for Garnacho, who surely was offside. He takes it round Callagher. He puts it in the net. But the cheers of the Manchester United fans are stuck in their throats because the offside flag of uh, Gary Bezik is raised and the goal is ruled out. Clinton Morrison. I put my flag out because I've seen it, but you know what? Bruno should have played it earlier. It's a great run from Garnacho. He just delayed the pass and I thought EA went early. It was a great finish from Garnacho, but it, the Liverpool's line were brilliant, but I just think Bruno could have played it earlier, but brilliant finish from Garnacho. Good start from Man United. And that, as you will gather, is Clinton Morrison setting alongside me here in the, uh, the age-old commentary position at Old Trafford. Clinton, Premier League goal scorer, Republic of Ireland international, and we're watching Liverpool in possession. It's the same kit as uh, per the cup tie three weeks ago. Ball given away by Kwanzaa. Manchester United are onto this. Bruno Fernandes inside the penalty area, but Kwanzaa comes across, and uh, the two of them come together, and the ball runs away through. And there's no hint of a, an appeal for a penalty there, only from some of the people in the stands. And it's a goal kick for Liverpool. And look at his place raw. I, I've been here a few times, and I've not heard the fans like this. They know the, mean, the impact of the game. It's been a good start from Man United. Well, certainly three weeks ago, when we had eight, 9,000 Liverpool fans, the atmosphere was amazing with the events of that day. Salah playing it through, Sobos lie, edge of the area, shoots, super save by Anana, got a hand to it, threw out left hand and crucially blocked it. That was an instinct save, but Liverpool finding spaces on the edge of the Manchester United penalty area that they never should have. It's an unbelievable save from Anana, to be fair. It's brilliant play from Salah, it's a great outside of the boot. And I said, John, this will go end to end. That's a Buzz Light has a shot. Nanana's going one way. It's a fantastic save, but what a start we've had in this game. Great save. I must say, in that position, left foot, he was on the edge of the area, took it into the box. He hit it, tried to hit it across the body of Onana, and uh, he just threw out a left hand, and it was perfect timing, wasn't it? And uh, deflected it across the box. Could have gone anywhere, but he was rewarded for his save. You're spot on, John. Yeah, you're, you are spot on. It's a brilliant play from um, Salah. He's been quiet over the last couple of games, so it's a big game for Salah, but the pass to Slovisla is brilliant. But I've got to give full credit to Anana. It's a fantastic save. Because Johnny, watching the replay, is going one way, and he sticks a strong hand out. Brilliant. Yeah, he loves the goal here. Salah, but there was the, the provider. Scored a hat-trick in that 5-0, the record 5-0. One of only two wins for Jurgen Klopp here as the Liverpool manager against Manchester United and uh, the ball is with Manchester United a free kick 10 yards inside their own half and uh, Casemiro is going to take this I do wonder how fit Casemiro is having come off it did sound as though he was doubtful but here he is in the starting lineup but uh, he has stood up takes the free kick back to Maguire Maguire and Camboala combining there just exchanging passes and then forward it goes from Maguire to the halfway line. Luis Diaz runs it infield, just got a touch to it ahead of Bruno Fernandes. And then Casemiro wins the ball back from Luis Diaz. Might have been a foul centre field. Anthony Taylor though waves the advantage, which is the right decision. Manchester United in possession, but they go back to the halfway line. Maguire steers it out there to the left flank. Juan Bissaka. Bruno Fernandes allows it to run. Casemiro then through to Juan Bissaka on the edge of the penalty area. But um, he actually brought it back 
And Manchester United, you know, if that had been a forward-thinking player, yes. perhaps Wan-Bissaka would have taken that on. Here is a forward-thinking player. Garnacho into the penalty area. Mainly on the chase. Bounces for Robertson to clear. Comes back for Manchester United. Dallow low ball into the area. Menu still there, but in steps. Uh, Endo with the challenge, crucially. And now Liverpool break away to the halfway line. Darwin Nunez takes it on down the left wing. Salah's in the middle. Maguire stands up to Darwin Nunez, who slips over. Hence the cheers, the ironic cheers from the Manchester United fans. And Harry Maguire just steps in and says, yep, thank you very much. I'll take the ball and I'll take it away. And it came to nothing. He's fuming, Salah. He threw his hands in the air because he, he wanted that early ball. I think he just got the run on wan -Bissaka. But you're right at the other end. wan -Bissaka, good run. Just got a nosebleed, John. Was in the, if it's an attacking player, he would have got his shot away. So I don't. I think he scored one one goal for Man United since he's been there. So, yeah, it was a nosebleed situation. But this is end-to-end, -end, John. What a start this game's been. Yeah. Two, to be precise, it is for uh, oh, Wan-Bissaka. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to outdo him then, I'm doing it. He's got two then, too. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but that was a chance, you know, let's, uh, let's not beat about the bush. As Casemiro plays the ball over the top, but Wan-Bissaka... Uh, Van Dijk is there to hook it away. It comes out to Bruno Fernandes on the left-hand side. He was one of the goal scorers in the 4-3. In the Famous 4-3, I think. It's gone down as. Whether we'll see the same sort of thrills and spills here today. But we certainly won't have extra time, I know that much. Ball on the left-hand side. Rashford plays it in field. And then uh, out it comes from Bruno Fernandes. Garnacho, he slips. And then recovers his position. And then takes it into the area. Garnacho with a cross to the near post. And Van Dijk sticks out a right leg. And hooks it behind him. It's the first corner of the match, says Anthony Taylor, the referee. And he's showing a yellow card. And that, I think, is for that challenge on the halfway line. Yeah, so a yellow card being shown. Was that to Van Dijk? I don't know if it was Van Dijk. I thought it was Bradley, but he's definitely booking someone. It's either Van Dijk or Bradley because they caught Marcus Rashford late here. And it, and on, the that's halfway line. on the halfway line. Yeah. yeah, it's Bradley. It's Bradley. Here, here. Watching the replay here, Rashford, it, it, it was Bradley. He went oh, back yeah. to his Bradley. And that was absolutely. Yeah. He, 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 not even Anthony Taylor could not show a yellow card. <laughs> yeah. He was refereeing the match last Sunday afternoon and did his best not to show any yellow cards. Actually, in the end, showed a couple for time wasting. Uh, Bruno Fernandes swings in the corner, but that's headed straight behind by the first defender. So it's going to be a second consecutive. Young Man corner. United now, John. You just keep giving a ball to Rashford. He's been booked, Bradley. Go and take him on. Something Jurgen Klopp will have to have a look at. Yeah, the two young defenders on that side of the Liverpool defence 20 year old Bradley, 21 year old Kwanzaa. But another corner for Manchester United. Bruno Fernandes, this time towards the penalty spot, but that's well headed away, actually. Excellent header from McAllister, it was, who got up. You know, he's not the tallest, but he really attacked that McAllister. Been such an important player for, for Liverpool in these recent weeks. He also scored one of the goals here in the 4-3. Onana is almost on the halfway line and passes the ball forward towards Garnacho's run, but Conor Bradley got there to head it back to, to goalkeeper Kelleher. He can play a 9 on That was great technique, John. That was nearly a 60-yard great pass to Garnacho. Good defending, though. He was a long way out of his penalty area as uh, Liverpool give it away. And it's been a, an enterprising start from Manchester United. Probably feel that they, they have to do that. Uh, Hoyland taking it onto the edge of the area. Garnacho's cross, that's blocked at source by Andy Robertson. It's going to be another Manchester United corner from this right flank. The Liverpool fans up there, obviously not so many of them, around about a couple of thousand for, uh, for a league match. So they're in that familiar corner. If you've been following your team at Old Trafford, you'll know exactly where they are. That's to our right, eight minutes played. Manchester United nil, Liverpool nil. Bruno Fernandes then raises his right arm. This time the delivery again towards the penalty spot, but this time it's Van Dijk who gets up and heads it away. Or actually it might have been Nunez. Bounces out towards the left-hand side. Here is Rashford bouncing ball, trying to, to keep it in. And actually in doing so, he's presented it back to Liverpool. And uh, there's a foul being committed, I think, by Juan Bissaka. And it's a free kick to Liverpool in their own right back area, Clinton Morrison. It's been a good start from Man United. It doesn't look like that defeat in midweek has, you know, hindered them or anything. They've been on the front foot, they've dominated. Van Dijk getting frustrated with the mid his midfield and some of his players having a go at them, but credit to Man United, started well. Yes, nil-nil. Arsenal top of the table as we speak here right now, 71 points. Liverpool with 70. Manchester City with 70. That's how tight it is. That's why Liverpool will feel that they've got to win this, particularly the way that Manchester City and Arsenal came through their matches yesterday. I thought Arsenal was so impressive 
at tea time at Brighton. Another performance from Arsenal, just like last Sunday afternoon, where you do think, hmm, yeah, I'm not sure that they're the outsiders. No, they're not. They're not going away. Like last season, they went away. They're not going away this season. Liverpool, uh, there's a there's a clearance charge down Wan Bissaka, and Liverpool are onto this. The ball is deflected across the face of the penalty area. Salah arrives on it, hits the shot. That's deflected away behind. And, uh, and Manchester United are calling bodies back into the, the penalty area as they prepare to face their first corner against them in front of the Stretford end, which is stretching high there, the two tiers. Andy Robertson, of course, comes across to take this. No Gomez in the team today, he's on the bench. Canate as well, with Kwanzaa preferred for this one. Gravenberg back among the substitutes, and Curtis Jones again on the bench as he was on Thursday night. When they left it late-ish against Sheffield United. Nil-nil, still early stages here. Robertson to take this. Left-footed corner to the near post. Diaz got ahead to it, but could only head it across the penalty area. Comes out to Salah. Salah pulls it down. Sobos live with a curling shot, but over the top by maybe a foot and a half. Yeah, it's good. They don't they deal with the first one well, Man United, but they don't get out quick enough. Salah lays it to Sobos, and he's trying to just um, bend it into that far corner. I think Anana would have had it covered. So it is nil-nil, and a goal kick to Manchester United. And Donana has made one good save, didn't have to get a hand on that. Might well have had it covered, actually, yeah. actually Onana. As Manchester United played up towards the halfway line, but it bounces off Hoyland. And now Endo, the important Japanese international, didn't play on Thursday night. Maybe Jurgen Klopp was, was keeping him for this one. That's what it looks like. Here's Diaz now, a wiry number seven, with his tight black curly hair, plays it across field, comes back to Van Dijk in the centre circle, doesn't seem to be part of the conversation for too many in terms of player of the season, Van Dijk, but he'd certainly be on my list. He'd be on my list, he'd be in my top three, that's for sure. Certainly, yes. Robertson on the left-hand side, infield towards Endo, who goes back into the centre circle. Maybe he's just too good, Van yeah, Dijk. exactly. Yes, Bradley, <laughs> now out to the right-hand side, to Salah, and then back towards Quanta on the halfway line, Bradley. Kelleher comes and makes himself available catching my eye all in that orangey coloured kit in these gloomy conditions on this April afternoon Van Dijk with the ball at his feet just taps it to his right to Kwanzaa and now it, it does feel that the game has settled down after quite a frantic first 12 minutes or so the one yellow card after that that, uh, that challenge that meaty challenge from Bradley as Liverpool go all the way back to Keller who will give it back to Kwanzaa in the right-back position, who will go long up towards Nunez, who's beaten in the air by Maguire, headed forward again for Liverpool. But wan Bissaka's in on the challenge on Salah, however. Sot Bosley plays it through to Nunez, and then there's a cover there, covering challenge from Dallo, who's able to come across and deflect it wide of goal, well wide of goal and behind but for a corner to Liverpool. He's got to do better there, um, um, Nunez. It's a good little ball from Sot Bosley. He can either carry on, open his body and play Salah in, or he could, he's trying to play Diaz. He was trying to do the right thing. It was good defending here from Dallo, but I think he can do better. I think there are already warning signs here for Manchester yeah. United in terms of when Liverpool have broken yeah. again we've seen you know, options for whoever it is on the ball and as of yet they haven't been able to take advantage but this is very much playing into the narrative that we were talking about before the game all of the opportunities that Manchester United have offered up to their opponents in recent matches as the ball from the corner is taken short comes back Luis Diaz outside the D running from right to left actually running all the way across into the fullback position over towards the tunnel here at Old Trafford comes back centrally Endo and now McAllister and the home crowd quietened now because of this Liverpool possession this does seem to be the pattern that has emerged as uh, Robertson and now it's the Liverpool fans in full cry as uh, Endo in the bright pink boots through Van Dijk to Robertson on the left flank. Robertson curls it forward, headed away by Dallo. Endo is able to get there ahead of Casemiro. Now Soboslai turns, rolls the ball to the right to Connor Bradley. Now Soboslai again. Endo lifted up towards Bradley's run on the edge of the area. Juan Bissaka went for it, didn't make it. And now it's eventually played out of play off. Connor Bradley for what is the Manchester United goal kick. Suddenly United seem to have gone past.
massive in the match. That's the problem, John. The first 10 minutes, the crowd are behind them. They go and press and they get the crowd going. Then there's a bit of love. There's a lack of quiet in the ground. And then you see Liverpool dominate. This is how I expected the game to go. Liverpool dominating. Man United to be in their shape. Hard to break down. But you're right, John. Comment you made earlier. They're far too open. Like Maguire and Kambala have to stay together. They can't go out of their slots because it's hard on the fullbacks. They've already got to deal with Salah and Diaz. Yeah, Thursday night, Chelsea had 28 attempts at goal. Brentford had 31. I thought they were excellent, mind you, Brentford, in that match. Everton had 23 when they <laughs> lost here. And Manchester City had 27. Liverpool, I reckon, have already had three. Yeah, they, they can see too many chances. We were speaking about it earlier. Here's Endo in the centre circle. But Manchester United can't get the ball back at the moment. It's Liverpool dominating the possession. Liverpool with... Uh, Jarrell Kwanzaa, right-footed pass, cross-field. He's going to do well to keep that in, Robertson. Heels on the white line, he did, headed infield. Uh, then it's headed down by uh, Camboala, comes back through the middle for Liverpool, and then Casemiro, a dainty little pass from him for to Rashford. Excellent footwork. Rashford then plays it for to Highland. Garnacho's available in the middle. Highland takes it into the box. There are defenders there with him. Van Dijk went with him. He couldn't get past him. Highland kept possession, though, brought it back outside the box. Rashford then gets a touch, and then Wan Bissaka hits Wan Bissaka, the pass forward from Bruno Fernandes. Rashford into the challenge, but with that, he uh, tackles the ball out of play for a throwing to Liverpool in their own right back position. He looks hungry, Rashford. And I've been in a lot of games this season and not seen him have this appetite and desire on that left hand side. But it's good play before that. Hoyland has to get his head up, John. Garnacho's in. He didn't get his head up and came back out of the box. But yeah. they look a threat on the break, Man United. Yeah, that's that's what you'd expect from them. That's what they are, really, isn't it? Yeah. And Eric Ten Hag, as uh, they win another throw in on the far side after Liverpool tried to clear it. Menu with a touch, then Casemiro back into the centre circle. Uh, in the latest of the, as the ball's played forward by Dallo to the edge of the penalty area, Bruno Fernandes is after this, but the offside flag goes up against the Manchester United captain. <laughs> He's even in, in classic Bruno Fernandes style, ends up on his knees, glaring at Anthony Taylor, waving his arms around. He was offside. Yeah, of course he was offside. I don't know why you're moaning about him pulling your shirt. You're offside. So regardless if he was pulling your shirt or not, accept it and move on. And uh, and referee Taylor just as a little reminder. I'm in charge. Something along the lines of, even though you're the captain of Manchester United, <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the man with the, the whistle. Uh, in the latest of the Champions Cup Rugby Union last 16 matches, it is Toulouse 10, Racing 92 nil. That's after Northampton had that good win over Munster earlier. Uh, the choice of listening, by the way, Sports Extra has county championship cricket commentary on what is the third day of the new season. Long ball forward towards the edge of the area, McAllister's onto this. Manchester United, Dallow in with a challenge, then Sobosly hits the shot. Casemiro went to ground, threw himself in front of the attempted shot from 22, 23 yards. Liverpool again, Bradley. Now he has Salah in a deep line position, square from him. And McAllister picks out a lovely pass, and then across it comes from Robertson. And arriving inside the penalty area, it's deflected wide by Sobosly, who is in there in amongst all of the, the red shirts but could only direct it wide from, what, 11 yards? Yeah, it's a great pass from McAllister. He's been outstanding recently. And Robertson, as, as all good fullbacks, gets his crosses in. And it's a great run from Slobberslide, but he just gets his feet all wrong and he puts it wide at the post. But you're, you're right, John. Every time Liverpool go forward, you think there's going to be a goal of him. Man United are struggling midfield. Kobe mainly has been quiet and it's a struggle because you've got Bruno there. He's trying to do his defensive duty, but it feels like it's Casemiro mainly. Yeah, that was the move of the match so far, that Liverpool move. As um, Mainu might have been found by Robertson, no. Referee Taylor says no, not in his opinion. Fair challenge by the Scotland captain. So Liverpool have possession again. Yeah, McAllister, it was a lovely pass, wasn't it? Pace. Mm. He picked it through the proverbial eye of the needle. That's what they say. Robertson. Eye of a needle pass, John. Yeah. The spawn. <laughs> and Sobos like just couldn't control it, arriving at pace. Kelleher, the Liverpool goalkeeper. No, I don't think Alisson is too far away from, from fitness now, as is Diogo Jota as well for maybe the final weeks of the season. Juan Bissaka, as uh, uh, excellent challenge, comes in from, from Kwanzaa on Bruno Fernandes. It was over on the left wing, but Kwanzaa committed to that challenge. Good challenge. 
and out of play for uh, a Manchester United throw on the left. He's done well because Con um, Konate's back now and you would think Konate and Van Dijk in big games like that and put the pairing together. So that's how good Kwanzaa and Bradley have done on that right-hand side. Yeah, just seem to be being careful with Konate, yeah, aren't they, with, his, with yeah. his injury record. Incidentally, Kelleher now with this appearance, this is his 25th appearance of the season for for uh, for Liverpool. He's now played in more matches than Alisson has oh. with the various injuries that he has, uh, has had. And he's done well. Liverpool with the throw. Then Endo passes the ball out towards the left-hand side where there appear to be <laughs> the proverbial acres of space for Liverpool. And Robertson takes it on and tries a shot which he dragged wide from the edge of the penalty area. Might have used Nunez to his left, but it did open up, so he went for goal, but dragged it wide. Yeah, Man United are so open. When they're in possession, they're so open. Like, Garnacho has to get back into shape, and so do the midfielders. But you're right, when Robertson gets that, I think it's a difficult one to beat an honour from there. Maybe he just slides in Nunez, and he's one-on-one -on -one with Dallo in the penalty box, and you can't really touch him there. But since we mentioned it, in terms of... Manchester United allowing the opponents opportunities on goal. That's another couple that Liverpool have had. It's far too many, John. It's far because you'll get punished because this is a good Liverpool team that have outstanding footballers. So what is the problem there then? Because when you've got Menu and Casemiro, should that not be designed to snuff that out? It should, but it depends how Ten Hag's setting them up because they look really open. If you've got them two, them two should be sitting. I think they have two and they leave Bruno in the number 10 who can just lay on their deepest line midfielder, which is Endo. And then Slavoslav and McAllister, you get Mania and Casemiro on them. They're not doing that at the moment and them, they're running off them two. And there's no McTominay today, not involved at all. Maybe listeners on the World Service haven't had that news yet. He's got an injury, an unspecified injury, so we'll find out later. The extent of that, Manchester United nil, Liverpool nil, World Service and Five Live, BBC Sounds as well, and uh, and more commentary to come from the Premier League later. Sheffield United, Chelsea from 5.30 is our next commentary match when Phil Jagielka will be alongside Ian Dennis as uh, Manchester United, Garnacho is dispossessed. McAllister, now Diaz, ball into the penalty area, blocked back to him comes back to McAllister centrally now Endo Endo on his right foot curls it over the top comes off the head of the defender Menu it was inside the penalty area which took it wide and behind for another Liverpool corner and they have assumed control Clinton no they have to and Garnacho's got to be stronger there. he loses the ball and he's just complaining to the referee and even Ten Hag saying you've got to get back up and get up it wasn't a foul McAllister was just too strong for him Jurgen Klopp just stretches his legs on the edge of the coaching area it's his last match as Liverpool manager against Manchester United is 21st against them in all competitions he has got a winning record but only just corner for Liverpool into the near post Nunez and then Diaz forces it in six yards out defender and goalkeeper on the line they couldn't keep it out and Liverpool take the lead and it's Luis Diaz and it's Manchester United nil, Liverpool one. Yeah, and, it, and it, it's been coming though. If you can't, you know what? It's criminal conceding from a set piece, I'm um, John. You cannot give someone of Luis Diaz that much time and space. It's a good little flick on from Nunes at the near post. You can't give Diaz that much time. He's three yards out and there's not one Man United near, defender near him to put into the um, back of the net. That's what I'm saying. They've got no leaders on that pitch, Man United. I say it week in, week out. Concede too many bad goals. Yeah, crucial touch from Nunez across the penalty area. The little glance, he got to it at the, at the near post, as it were, 10 yards out. And that glance right into the path of, of Diaz, who ju just sort of found space on the edge of the six-yard box. And with his right foot, sort of waist high, hooked it in, past the men on the line for his 13th goal of the season. Scored against Brighton last Sunday in that crucial win and he scored the opening goal here at Old Trafford and Liverpool have now got Manchester United exactly where they want them. Now Manchester United have got to chase the game because while we talk about Liverpool having to win this, if Manchester United still believe that they can finish in the top four stroke five, well they've probably got to win the rest of their matches pretty much. So they've got to go for it. They're 1-0 down, and that could spell trouble for them. And the Liverpool supporters now in great voice after the wins for Manchester City at Crystal Palace, the win for Arsenal at Brighton. Now, Manchester, now Liverpool are doing their thing here at Old Trafford.
so uh, uh, suddenly the weather clears and it's suddenly I can see clearly now the rain is gone Salah to the left hand side to Robertson who takes it on towards the edge of the area little ball in bounces off Dallow comes back to Robertson again left footed cross to the back post Maguire is there to head it across the penalty area and out of play for a throw 10 yards back from the corner flag. that's the song isn't it John I can see clearly now the rain is there it is yeah now who was that that's early 70s I do know isn't it, it? I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking at Gary because Gary is dynamite. Dynamite. With that sort of thing. I, I know the song, but I'm not going to sing it because I can't sing. Yeah. And it's on the tip of my tongue as well. Here is McAllister, just next to the the corner where the tunnel is. It's Gary's got it. Jimmy Cliff. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes it was. A classic. Actually, <laughs> a timeless classic. It is. It is. It is a classic. Well, this classic Liverpool team have won another corner, and. Uh, it's just next to the tunnel, Robertson's waiting to take this. And Liverpool now, in the way that all the, the top teams do, the best teams do, there's no let up. They've taken the lead, now they're going for a second. Robertson swings it in, that is headed away by Casemiro on the edge of the six-yard box, comes out to Sobos Lai. He was charged down at Saw, still in the area, and then a fly kick away from Bruno Fernandes, volleys it to the halfway line. Connor Bradley sends it back over the top to the edge of the area. Cambuala heads that one away. And then Casemiro chests it down, he's in danger, he has given it away with that chest down, giving it back for the white and green of Liverpool and now Endo that's an excellent challenge from Menu though to dispossess Endo that's a little win for Manchester United Hoyland now Manchester United relying on their exciting front players Bruno Fernandes steps across the ball he was fouled by McAllister he can complain about that McAllister as much as he likes and he's shaking his head he, he's suggesting that Bruno Fernandes made the most of that but it looked like a foul to me no it is a foul he, he, he does ever so well he lets the ball run across him and McAllister just clips him so it is a foul. I just think even if any player gives away a free kick, they'd always argue with it, John. But yeah, he catches Bruno. Good bit of skill from Bruno Fernandes. Liverpool leading through the Luis Diaz goal. But Manchester United with a, a rare foray forward here. Now under bright conditions. Bruno Fernandes, 35 yards out with this free kick. Right footed, he plays it in. Casemiro heads it right across the six yard box. And no one could get a touch. How for the life of me do you not have a centre forward going in there and getting cheap goals, John? I, don't, I didn't care about having build-ups there. It's a great header from Casemiro. I know Hoyland's coming in, but he's coming in too late. You have to anticipate and have more bodies in the box. Great ball from Bruno Fernandes. Great little run from Casemiro. He runs late. He's onside. It's a fantastic header. Exactly. Got, uh, yeah, it's a great header. They've got to be scoring there. It's actually a superbly worked set piece. And Casemiro, beyond the far post, headed across the box. I mean, there were defenders in there, three, four of them. Campbell was closest to the uh, initial touch for United and Hoyland as well but but no one no one could get a touch that's that feels like a really crucial moment there definitely because, you know on the, on the match that we've seen so far Manchester United aren't going to get too many chances like that although they might have another one now Casemiro through to Bruno Fernandes does well nice footwork Hoyland inside the penalty area Hoyland trying to work a position but crowded out by McAllister and Endo Casemiro slides to win it back here's Kobe Menu out to the right-hand side to Garnacho. Garnacho taking on McAllister, and then in comes Darwin Nunez. Who's the judge to have been fouled by Garnacho? That was debatable. Darwin Nunez came in at 100 miles an hour. It's not a foul, it's not a foul. It's where Nunez runs in, I'm watching the replay. Garnacho, he's coming and he's tackled, and they clash with each other. It's not a foul. I, I, sometime, anyway, I, no, I'm not. Taylor's all right, he's doing a good job. Climbs to his feet. You can hear what the, the home supporters think of uh, of Darwin Nunez's role, quite literally, yeah. in winning that free kick. And uh, and he's okay. And he's on the halfway line. I see uh, Eric Ten Hag just calling across. Willie Kambwala making his first start for Manchester United at Old Trafford. Just a few more words of encouragement, advice. But Kambwala, poor touch there. Nunez now into the penalty area. Kambwala trying well. to recover. He has recovered. And he managed to block the cross back to his goalkeeper, Onana. Well done, youngster. And he gets the crowd going behind him because he makes the mistake, but he's got the pace, as we were speaking about before, to recover, John. And he wants to get the crowd going. I can see him cheering up the crowd. And that's what they want, one of their own to come and cheer him up. But it's a great recovery because I thought Nunez was in. Yeah, he enjoyed the crowd's response to that. So what it's all about is a 19-year-old 
If you're a Manchester United player, you've got that badge on your shirt and you get an ovation like that. Mind you, the alarm bells were clanging loudly after he conceded the ball initially to Darwin Nunez, but it's all about the recovery and he got himself he got himself into it and he got himself out of it he did Hernacho is one of the most frustrating players I've ever seen in the Premier League he does so much good stuff and stuff where he should keep it simple he doesn't and he's probably so frustrating because he's such a talent mind you one of the contenders one of his rivals for that role Anthony is on the uh, substitute bench today as Bruno Fernandes wins a free kick centre field the Liverpool supporters I think that is debatable. <laughs> a, I Amazing. think it was a foul. I think he's thought. late. Yeah, he is late. Endo's late on Bruno. I think it's just because it's Bruno Fernandez, John. <laughs> Half an hour played. Manchester United nil. Liverpool won. The latest match in this title race here on Five Live in the World Service. And with this scoreline, Liverpool would be going back to where they started the weekend. Top of the table. But uh, Casemiro playing it over the top, but he's got too much on that. And it's through to Keller. Manchester United nil, Liverpool 1. And uh, Van Dijk just putting the foot on the ball, passing it back into the penalty area to uh, to his goalkeeper, Keller, who I don't think he's had a save to make yet, has he? There have been a couple of incidents in the penalty area, but he's not been called upon to keep the ball out of his net. There's Liverpool winner throwing over there on the far side in front of the Sir Alex Ferguson stand. Name up there on the front of the roof in huge red letters. Not sure the man himself is here, just having a look to my left. You can see Sir Jim Ratcliffe's little beard. He's, I think it's tweed he's wearing today. Yeah, it's a bit bright, that suit. Gr the green, I think, yeah. it's, I think it's tweed, he looks rather countrified it does. to me. As uh, Marcus Rashford has the ball on the far side and plays it back into the penalty area to uh, Onana <laughs> actually skipped off the turf and he had to jump up in the air to chest that down and I thought it was going to hit him in the face for a moment but he managed to get his chest to it and Manchester United will bring it out from the back Manchester United who've dropped points in both of the Premier League matches they've played since the the great 4-3 here Campbell's pass a little short but Luis Diaz plays it out of play he, he was trying to win a throw in but it didn't touch Dallow so it's a throw into Manchester United just down in front of where Jurgen Klopp is standing just a few yards away from Eric Ten Hag say it's Jurgen Klopp's final match as the Liverpool manager against Manchester United it's entirely possible it might be Eric Ten Hag's final match as the Manchester United manager against Liverpool but we'll see about that I suspect the man in tweed will have a say in that Maguire right for the ball out towards the left hand side Rashford takes on Bradley beats him into the edge of the penalty area Kwanzaa there's support there from Wan Bissaka Bradley is there again Bradley steps in and gets a touch on that and he's been able to play it back to Kwanzaa who chips it forward and Liverpool are playing themselves out of trouble although Manchester United win it back Kobe Menu very tight there stabs it forward it's cleared away by Liverpool and now the green and white shirts are pouring forward only three defenders back for Manchester United Diaz de Sala left foot shot saved by a diving Onana to his right to push it away wide and once again once again Liverpool players outnumbering Manchester United defenders as they come forward problem with Man United is when they give the ball away their recovery runs are not quick enough and Liverpool just break and we've known that for Liverpool since Jurgen Klopp's come to the club once they win it they just break in their numbers as brilliant little um, ball from McAllister Diaz he picks the right pass and Salah just doesn't think he catches it sweet enough and it's a comfortable save for Anana it's another corner they did score from a corner, albeit from the other side. Robertson to take this one. Deep one towards the back post. It's over everyone. Although Salah is there on the edge of the area. Left-footed curler. And Nana might have been going wide, but diving to his right. He pushed it well wide anyway and made sure. And it's another corner. I think this is number six. And why does this keep happening when Salah's free at the back post? Surely you've got to identify this as players. But yeah, it's a comfortable save from Nana. You're right, John. It might look like it might be going wide, but he can't take no chances. No, so another save. Another chance for Liverpool who lead 1-0 if you just joined us on 5 Live or the World Service. Corner taken short, Robertson to McAllister. Now Sobos lie, back to Robertson. Robertson's crossed to the back post, dangerous. Headed away for Manchester United. Sid well, with players of both sides in on that. Sobos lie now with a run to the edge of the area. Finds Nunez, curling shot. That's over by a foot. Onana diving to his left this time. Clawing at it. 
but it was over, as I say, we by were, foot or so. John, we were right behind it, and I thought he said it out right. He, he just needed to bend it a bit more, and it hit the top of the, just brushed the top of the net. But it's good play from Slobberslight, and that's where I think the game's being won and lost is in midfield. Liverpool are overrunning them. Yeah, more chances, long list of chances on my piece of paper here. Next to nothing for Manchester United at the other end. Manchester United nil, Liverpool one. Jimmy Cliff update for you from Gary Clinton. Uh, Jimmy Cliff once sang the Jamaican national anthem here yeah, he's a... in this ground. Oh, is it? Ahead of uh, an England match against Jamaica in uh, in 2006. Legend, legend so reggae so artist so he is. So he is. Yeah. See, you must have known that same, when you said it. See, must he'll have sung it, won't he? Of course, he would have. Definitely. <laughs> One 0 Liverpool lead, and uh, good value for it. Yeah, yeah no, for there's sure. no. You can't get away from that. No. I think Man United had a spell the first 10 minutes, but since then it's been all Liverpool. Van Dijk now to Diaz, Diaz with a flick. Here's Robertson down the left-hand side. Robertson marauding down the wing into Sobos Lai in the penalty area. Ball right across the box. Salah on the left foot swings it over the top of the crossbar and lands it halfway up the lower tier of the Stratford end. Oh, it's great football again from Liverpool. Sobos Lai picks him out. Maguire misses the header, should be doing better. And Salah, you, you're just thinking at the moment he's getting these chances, he's not putting them away, but... He's still world class, but it's a good opportunity. Just fires it over the bar. Jurgen Klopp went right down on his knees when uh, when Salah didn't convert that. And I have to say, it does take me back three weeks here when when Liverpool in the second half of that match had chance after chance, didn't take them, and they were made to pay. So, strictly speaking, Manchester United are still in the game because of Liverpool's wastefulness they are but I'm looking at Man United they've got players throwing their arms in the air but they've got no idea how they're going to break Liverpool down or how they're going to create stuff at the moment ball out of play for a throw on the far side the match started in genuinely stormy conditions must be the tail end I think of Storm Kathleen which has posed problems I think up and down the country today but it's moved away and it is now dry as Liverpool take the throw down into the full-back position. Luis Diaz is there, Maguire as well. Maguire comes out with the ball, left-footed towards the halfway line, where uh, Kobe Nenu gets a touch on that. Rashford is off now, head down, down the left wing for, for Rashford. Might have run it out of play, he did, says the assistant on the far side. He's been chased by three Liverpool players. It was very tight, and just one of those touches just took it over the line, throw in. Yeah, it was good pace from Rashford, but they know he's a threat because he had three Liverpool players chasing him back. Uh, Liverpool so far, 13 shots, and uh, Manchester United have had none. No attempts on, tar uh, no attempts on goal. And uh, so 13 to nil at the moment. And that, I'm afraid, is, is rather damning. You know, this is why we have this discussion. This is why the debate, Monday night club tomorrow night, if it stays like this, if Liverpool win it, it will be this kind of discussion that, uh, that Mark Chapman will be having with Chris Sutton. And Andros Townsend's on the programme tomorrow night. And Rory Smith as well. And, uh, and there will be a Masters preview, by the way, at 9 o'clock tomorrow night, which I must mention, uh, Ian Carter's already in the United States. He's actually at the Live event in Florida this weekend, Ian, where he spoke to John Rahm, the defending champion for the Masters, and, uh, and that interview, that feature-length interview, will be on Five Live tomorrow night between 9 and 10, and full coverage commentary from Augusta next weekend. Well, from Thursday, of course. Manchester United nil, Liverpool 1. Here's McAllister. And then back to Kwanzaa and Liverpool have it halfway inside their own half. I just feel at the moment these three title chasers, they are, they are so much in the groove. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they are battle-hardened, aren't they? And Liverpool look like that to me here today. They do, and they're miles ahead of everyone else as well. Those three teams, they've been outstanding. And you can see here, Man United get the ball and Dallow gets it, he just plays it up the field. And, and, Long ball forward for Liverpool, but Campuala was underneath that, and then Maguire just hoists it straight up in the air, and then Maguire leaning forward, but Liverpool have it back in the centre circle. It's actually hard to believe 
that Liverpool finished below Manchester United in the Premier League last season. Yeah, Let's I not forget that. That's a one-off, and that I don't think that will happen for a bit now. Well, even though uh, when Jurgen, well, you well, no, when Jurgen Klopp goes, there will be a big, there will yes. be a big shift. But I still think if Liverpool can hold on to all of these key players, they'll still finish ahead of Man United. I think Man United is a long, long project. Well, that's for the future. And now is Liverpool winning one 0 and Diaz is. Uh, I think it was a fair tackle. It's not been given as a free kick, but he's come off worse than that, and he's uh, he's clutching his ankle. And, um, and Manchester United, much to the crowd's displeasure, Casemiro's put the ball out of play. It's not a head injury, so that Luis Diaz can receive some treatment. And he's going to get up without treatment. I'm not kicking the ball out. I, can, I agree with the fans. It's not a hedge injury, so why am I going to kick the ball out? I'm not kicking the well, ball out. Anthony Taylor is saying to Luis Diaz, do you need do you need treatment? Oh, I'm watching it, but his ankle does get caught. He gets the ball, but he gets caught in the follow-through. So it looked like maybe he's twisted his ankle. But I'm not kicking the ball out, John. Not in a big rival derby like this. There's absolutely no chance. With my team losing, no way. Yeah. I need to try and get every advantage I can. We are absolutely we're getting we're getting passed to death out here. And, and he's not received treatment. No. He's got up, and then we've had a, a drop ball. But it's not a drop ball because do, do um, yes. Nunes thought it was a drop ball. It's not. They kicked it out, so he's got to take a throw on. Yes. He must know the rules, no? <laughs> it is a throw. <laughs> it's a, it's all right. Well, you know all the languages that are involved yeah. in, the, yeah. in the Premier League. Yeah. Anthony Taylor, Dallo, Nunes. Well, they managed to find that through the international language of body language, they uh, they indicated that it was a throw, not a drop ball. Right, there we are. 1-0 Liverpool lead into the last five minutes of the first half. Harry Maguire, with the ball at his feet, gives it to his right. And the teenager, Camboala, turns back and passes it to goalkeeper Onana. The, the only positive for Manchester United and their supporters is that it is only 1-0. Casemiro. Then back to Harry Maguire. And then it's helped forward by Rashford through the middle, but that will bounce all the way to Keller, who takes the ball on the edge of the box. So there, there won't be two nil-nils in the league between these sides. That's only happened once before. Here is Endo, right-footed pass beyond Rashford Sobos Lai is onto this and he's got the better of it and he plays it across Nunez Diaz then with the shot Nunez allowed it to run into the path of Diaz but Manchester United did have defenders back and were able to block it wide and uh, and it is a corner for Liverpool it's actually Bradley not Sobos Lai who took it into the area the right back yeah you're right and it's Rashford he don't want to be running back to his own goal but the problem is, is Salah's taking wan Bissaka and they've said wan Bissaka man Mark Salah so he's taking him to areas and that's where space is where they do well with their fullbacks Bradley's making good runs in and good little old, good little dummy from Nunes and it was good defending in the end from Dallo yeah Dallo's left leg blocked it wide of goal so it's in another corner at Liverpool yet another corner I think it's number 8 and this is from the side from which they did score the goal. So Soboslai takes it in, and this time Rashford actually does get there ahead of Luis Diaz, who was trying to flick it on. They looked as though they were trying to switch it around. Diaz there, looking to glance it at the near post. Manchester United with Bruno Fernandes, right for the pass, but that's way beyond anyone else, and it bounces all the way through. You know what? Stays in play. I don't feel... I don't feel that's Bruno Fernandes. That's got natural. He has to run in behind. You can't keep coming to the ball, coming to the ball, running to back, running behind. He frustrates the life out of me, John, because he's got so much ability, but I don't think he plays to his full potential. This is going to take some transformation. Even though this is 1-0, this is going to take some transformation. It's a, it's a leap of faith, leap of imagination, really, to think that, that Manchester United are suddenly going to outclass Liverpool and win this match. Bradley does well skips over the challenge of Casemiro now Salah on the right hand side ball in just beyond Nunez in the middle and it's collected by Onana who's looking to get rid of it quickly but he's, he's missed hit it he's missed kicked it to the halfway line and he's given it back to Liverpool McAllister then turns he knew that Hoyland was arriving Hoyland who's you know, barely been involved in the match because Liverpool have had so much of the ball Luis Diaz is then well tackled by Dallow actually he thought he was away and Liverpool now on the back foot Manchester United with Bruno Fernandes couldn't find the pass forward he was trying to whip it through for Rashford but into the path of Kwanzaa and now Liverpool with Salah on the right hand side Salah Maguire goes very tight on, uh, on the Egyptian who eventually goes to ground 
but Maguire concedes the throw-in near the corner flag on the right. Sometimes, you know, fans play a big part. You know when they're under pressure and Nana gets that? They was not set for, to do that, to play it back, give it back to Liverpool. You've been defending most of the half. Just relax, Nana. Getting at half-time only 1-0. 1-0 Liverpool. Throw-in taken by them. Back it goes to Van Dijk, who calls for it in his turquoise boots on the halfway line, looking like he's not got a hair out of place. No, he never does. I don't, I don't understand how he can play 90 minutes plus and he's has his hair stuck in there. It's unreal. If I was playing against him, I just tried to mess it up for the sake of it. <laughs> <laughs> Might not touch the ball, but at how, least I've how, messed his hair. How mischievous is <laughs> it? Bradley now for Liverpool on the right-hand side. Two minutes of time are going to be added on at the end of the first half. It's been Liverpool's first half, but just the one goal. Casemiro is then beaten to it. He's dispossessed by Soboslai, and now McAllister. And then Diaz, Nunez is on the left-hand side now. Nunez up to the corner of the penalty area, stabs it across. Robertson back to Nunez, shoots across the face of goal. And Onana threw out the left hand. I think he got a touch on it. In fact, the offside flag was up. Yeah, it's a good play uh, from Nunez, you're right. He would not have counted. I think he did save it, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he did save it. Another good save, actually. Right, wasn't to know. Manchester United nil, Liverpool won. Half-time approaching. And uh, lots of movement now here. We've got media from all over the world. I was delighted to see Yap Stam here amongst the, the many former players. Always nice to see Yap Stam. A, because he's uh, such a nice chap and he'll yeah. always have a lovely word with you, but also because he was uh, the subject of fact of the day on Friday. Uh, Yapstam, so I was doubly pleased to see him. He, uh, Tony Lipsy's fact was that it was Yapstam snoring that kept Oli Gunnar Solskjaer awake in the week of the Champions League final in 1999. That it was helped, the though, didn't it? The day. <laughs> well, clearly it did. It, yeah. it, it did the trick. And, uh, and so uh, that was Friday's fact of the day, every Friday at 20 past five on five live. Here is Luis Diaz playing the ball in field towards Salah McAllister then, other space here, Sobos Leicester sit down, now on the right hand side Bradley's ball across but Manchester United got defenders in the right place at the right time, it was Juan Bissaka who blocked it behind corner yet again for Liverpool. Yeah, it's good defending from Juan Bissaka because I just feel like Slobos should have had that shot, John. I just think it was one pass too many. It was a slow pass into Bradley, but you've yeah. got to credit Juan Bissaka. He does well. And that was one of the things that, that caught them out in the FA Cup tie three weeks ago. It was almost like trying to walk the ball into the net. So it is another corner in added time. Liverpool could really twist the knife here if they're able to take advantage corner played into the near post not like that they won't Bruno Fernandes is able to volley it away out of play on the far side for throwing to Liverpool did you play against Yapstam Clinton or was yeah, he yeah, before yeah. you no yeah. no I played against Yapstam yeah. Premier yeah, League and the international I, I played on the other defender I weren't getting near him that's for sure <laughs> why does that not surprise me <laughs> exactly <laughs> well uh, the whistle goes before Liverpool can take the throw They've dominated the first half, absolutely dominated. After a competitive first, what, ten minutes or so, Liverpool then took charge, scored a goal from uh, from a right-sided corner, Nunez flicking it across, Diaz volleyed it into the net from six yards, um, and they lead 1-0. All, all they lack, Liverpool, is a, is a second goal. And they probably deserve a second and even probably a third goal. I think Man United would be happy to only go in 1-0 down. I know they had a good start the first ten minutes, but have not worked Kelleher, not been a shot on... Kelleher's goal that's nowhere near good enough at the moment but Liverpool have been outstanding they saw what Arsenal and Man City done um, yesterday and then now they're responding today but it's only 45 minutes Man United are still in this game yeah Liverpool doing what they need to do to go back to the top of the Premier League table and for Manchester United it's a it's another performance which points to why their home supporters are so unhappy with where their club is right now it is Manchester United nil Liverpool one and Steve Crossman is here in the commentary box with us at Old Trafford. Steve. Um, they're just so open, Clinton. I mean, we talked before the game a lot about the, the very dynamic front three that Liverpool have, and they make such clever runs. The reality is they don't really have to, though. I mean, the one where Nunez went through and you said, you know, he's, he's got to find a better pass there, just ran straight through the middle of the pitch. Yeah, he did, but they were open, and it looks like Casemiro and Kobe Mainu are struggling. In particular, Casemiro, he had, there was a slight doubt whether he played today, but I don't, when, even when he's full fit, I don't think he covers the ground like he used to. He's still a brilliant, good midfielder, but they're lacking pace in that midfield area. So you're looking at, do they 
they bring on someone like a Mason Mount to give them energy just coming back from injury because that's where they're getting opened up in midfield. You're right, Crossy. They break Man United and they're not quick, en quick enough to recover. And that's how Liverpool are getting their joy. But Liverpool have not killed this game. And for their dominance in the first half, perhaps they should have done. Yeah, they should have done without shadow of that. They've had great opportunities. And it's, you know what? It's either the final pass, um, the final shot, just there at the end, slobber slide. Maybe should have got it shot away. Bradley, good defender from wan -Bissaka. And it's just moments like that where Liverpool are missing. But they've been dominant. They've been outstanding in his 30, 45. But they have to be more clinical. And that's the thing I, I think Jurgen Klopp will say. This is definitely not over because the game should be over, but we haven't killed it off yet. Done some great celeb spying in that first half. I know you well have because you kept nudging game. me oh, as well. Goodness me. Well, it's just that these games that bring people together who you would never think would be brought together. For example, uh, Westlife's Brian McFadden. Yeah, he's come was, to see me, you know. I, of course he has. Of course. Although he was blowing kisses at Kenny Dalgleish. Yeah, I saw, I saw Ke King Kenny and him Doesn't blowing kisses. Yeah, I know, I know. But and he's also, a legend. <laughs> the most prolific goal scorer of right now isn't even on the pitch. It's uh, Wrexham striker Paul Mullin, I know. who jumped up and punched the air when Liverpool scored. I saw that, and he's in the Man United director's box, and yep. his mate beside him was even more um, going mad, jumping up and down. So, yeah, brave. I'm very brave, to be fair, but I think you're allowed to do it in that director's box because you're with um, some of the big hierarchy. I think you do that anywhere else in the stand, you won't be allowed. Yeah, got to keep your head down. Uh, Manchester United nil, Liverpool won then here at Old Trafford. Of course, we'll bring you second half commentary. We're going to be heading to Wembley Stadium uh, shortly to look ahead to the EFL Trophy final. Kicks off in 10 minutes, Peterborough Wickham. Uh, we'll also make our first trip of the day to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Remember, Spurs Forest is a game we'll keep you up to date with from 6 o'clock during 6.06. And we'll go to Bramall Lane for the first time. Sheffield United, Chelsea in full at half past five. We'll squeeze in a bit more old firm reaction as well after the news with Joe Holmby. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. The Israeli military says it has reduced the number of its troops in southern Gaza as it regroups for the next stage of its war against Hamas. On the sixth month anniversary of the start of the conflict, the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel was just one step away from victory and vowed there would be no let up in fighting against her until Hamas released all its hostages. The Deputy Prime Minister Oliver Dowden says he believes it is still legal for the UK to continue selling arms to Israel. There have been calls to halt the trade after seven aid workers were killed by an Israeli airstrike in Gaza last Monday. Labour has called for the Foreign Secretary Lord Cameron to face questions from MPs. Police have taken the unusual step of naming a man they want to question about the murder of a woman found stabbed in Bradford city centre yesterday. Habiba Massam is 25 and from the Oldham area. And thousands of bikers have taken to the road to pay homage to hairy biker Dave Myers. He died from cancer in February at the age of 66. The ride from Beverley in East Yorkshire up the coast to Whitby and Scarborough was organised to raise money for cancer research. On BBC iPlayer. Talk your station. Okay, let's do this. Get my little race head on. We will be stopping at every station. Come on, Mum, come on. Let's go. Just push it through. Go, go, go. Race Across the World is back. Because I'll tell you now, there's no way I'm going to give up. Five intrepid duos travel from Japan to Indonesia. I think we will win. War. Confident. With no phones, bank cards or directions. Mum, they're behind us. Run! The brand new series of Race Across the World starts this Wednesday on BBC iPlayer. This is Five Live Sport with Steve Crossman. On Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. Manchester United nil, Liverpool won here at half-time at Old Trafford. Second half commentary to come on Five Live Sport. In our first commentary, it was an absolute belter. Rangers came back from 2-0 and 3-2 down to finally draw 3 all in the old firm against Celtic at Ibrox. Philippe Clement's side, a point behind the leaders now with a game in hand. We're going to hear from Brendan Rodgers in a, in a second, but first here's the Rangers boss. I think my, my boys did something special today. Uh, not the beginning of the game. For sure, and second half we we showed our our real uh, our real quality, our real personality also to to chase them, to make it difficult for them, to create good chances, to score good goals, and to get a, a well 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 deserved points. So I think the, we are more winners of the day. Um, 
it's an important thing also, 0-2 behind against Celtic in a home game to not stop. I think it's everybody sees this team is totally different than five months ago. Then they would have been dead. And now they keep on fight until the last second. And then you can get what you deserve. It could have been more also, but I think the, the result is also is also good. But yeah, I thought the performance was very, very good to come here, the, the, to, to play with no supporters and um, to play with that courage that we did. With the first half we were excellent. We could have had the game out of sight at that point. So um, but some of our play, the composure, and how we played, the pressure that we put them under um, was very, very pleasing. Uh, you expect some sort of reaction second half. I'm disappointed with the penalty uh, because that gives them a little up in the game whenever we were much, much the better team. Um, I think if you watch the watch it back, I, th- I think that the, the referee made the right decision in the game, but um, it went against us. So you then expect a little bit of uh, pressure at 2-1. They get a fortunate deflection, which brings it to 2-2, and then then you have to then stand up and, and fight. So, um, and the players did that. But overall, I think the so so pleasing for the team and the mentality that we showed. We're disappointed not to win, but to, to leave here today with it all in our hands is what we wanted, and uh, and for that, I'm really really proud. Brendan Rodgers and before him, Philippe Clermont. Rangers, by the way, play their game in hand against Dundee on Wednesday. And there is another old firm meeting yet to come at Celtic Park before the end of the season. In five minutes' time, uh, we'll be underway in the EFL Trophy final. Peterborough versus Wickham teams are out. Henry Moran. They are. Peterborough have won this trophy once before, ten years ago, when Darren Ferguson, manager today, was again their manager. This time they're pushing to go up from League One. Automatic promotion is still very much a possibility. Look out for Efren Mason-Clark up top. He scored 19 times this season. Wickham, meanwhile, they're safe in the mid-table of League One. They've never reached this final, but it is their third visit to Wembley in just four years. No side outside the top flight has been more regularly. A wonderful story up front for them as well. Richard Kone came to the UK in 2019, played for the Ivory Coast in the Homeless World Cup. He started this season in ninth tier football at Athletic Newham. Today, he starts at Wembley. Great story. Henry, thank you very much. Uh, He will keep us up to date from Wembley Stadium in the Premier League. Spurs can move into the top four with a win this evening. They host Nottingham Forest, who are only outside the relegation zone on goal difference. Gets underway at six o'clock. Mark Scott. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Crossy. Contrasting emotions there would have been for fans of these two clubs when they were watching the results come in yesterday. Spurs supporters would have been pleased to see Villa held to that goal, uh, to that draw by Brentford, rather, that means that they will go above Villa, as you say, on goal difference and have a game still in hand in the fight for fourth place with a victory here. Meanwhile, goal difference, the only thing keeping Forrest out of the drop zone now after Luton's late victory, while Everton and Brentford's results have pushed those two clubs four points above the visitors as well so the result is very precious for both of these sides in what is Nuno Espirito Santo's first meeting with Spurs since he was sacked as Tottenham boss after just 17 games in charge here Mark thank you very much Uh, Mark will keep us up to date during 6.06 with Robbie Savage and Chris Sutton which follows us here at Old Trafford we then have commentary of course before then of Sheffield United against Chelsea at half past five Ian Dennis former Sheffield United defender Phil Jagielka are at Bramall Lane for us Ian you, you know Chris Wilder really well the last thing he will want to do is go down with anything else than a big fight Absolutely. Uh, still a lot to play for. We were just uh, working out that something like 12 players who are out of contract at the end of the season, three also on loan. So the, the players have got something to play for as well, uh, as well as the professional pride, because, you know, it's unlikely that they are going to survive. But, um, you know, anybody who knows uh, Chris Wilder will, will know that he's, he's, he's not going to give in. He's going to continue to, to fight. And um, I think he's been happy with the consistency of the, the, the last three performances as well from his team, despite the, uh, the results not going in their favour. And you were obviously there, Phil, at, uh, at Sheffield United Sheffield United under Chris. Um, they look like they're almost certainly going to go down. How much can be done now, though, which will help them next season? Yeah, I think there's, an, there's, there's a lot can be done. Obviously, you're setting the foundations for next season. As Ian just alluded to, there's potentially not going to be the same playing squad if if they don't obviously renew a few contracts, but they can sort stuff out now. They'll, obviously, it's a matter of time, I think, before it'll probably be confirmed what division they'll be playing in next year, but... 
Um, it should give me a little bit of a head start on, on planning for next year. And like you say, Chris, we're desperate to, to take it as far and as long as possible before anything's sort of confirmed. But um, yeah, it's definitely a, a great time to, to put into practice for maybe things, not only for this season, but obviously for the start of next. R remarkably, Ian, Chelsea sort of are playing for something because after this awful season, um, they could yet end up qualifying for Europe. Yeah, and don't forget they've got the FA Cup semi-final yes. to look forward to coming up very soon against Manchester City. Uh, but you're right, Europe is, is still a possibility for them. One of the uh, ninth in the table, depending on how the European competitions pan out and the additional places, uh, it might well be that European football could go down to seventh or indeed even eighth in the uh, in, in the Premier League. So uh, Chelsea, who are currently five points adrift of seventh place West Ham, do have something to, to pursue in that respect so yeah very much they've got something to play for and if you look at their recent form you know they've been involved I don't think we're going to have a goalless draw here today judging no. by the, the two teams recent results and I hope I haven't put the kiss of death on that but Chelsea alone have been involved in 31 goals in their last six games and individually as well there's plenty to play for Phil not least Cole Palmer who's, who's getting close to Erling Haaland now in the in the goal scoring charts in the Premier League he will not only have that on his mind he will also have the summer on his mind clearly yeah, I think so. But if you if you listen to his interviews and and the sort of type of person he is, he just loves playing football and he was desperate to, to get out of Man City and, and become a first team regular. And obviously Chelsea offered him that and he's showing everyone what a talent he is. Um, and he'll, he's obviously football did a talking. He will want to be on that plane in the summer. But the only way he does that is, is to continue to score goals. And like I say, if he did manage to pip Haaland for the golden boot, I think that would be a, a double bonus for him. He, uh, he definitely lets his football do the talking in. His interviews aren't the longest. Um, he's obviously already been in the England squad under Gareth Southgate, but he'll be one of many players who people are saying he must pick. I think there are about 15 players that must be picked in the starting 11 now. Yeah, what might be interesting in the next 24, 48 hours is there's going to be a meeting in Dusseldorf tomorrow with all of the coaches for the Euros and top of the agenda, certainly for the coaches when they gather in Germany, will be looking to extend the, 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 the squad from 23 to 26. Ronald Koeman has recently said that it's absurd that they're going to go back from 26 to 23. So certainly the top nations, um, I would think, I think uh, Nagelsmann is in favour. I would imagine Gareth Southgate possibly too. Uh, so I think there'll, there'll be a push to try and increase that squad size to 26, which will certainly help a, a number of individuals who are all clamouring for a place to be involved in the summer for England. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Ian Dennis, Phil Jagielka, your commentary team. Full commentary on the way at half past five of Sheffield United versus Chelsea. 6.06 will follow that and we will keep you up to date with Spurs against Nottingham Forest during that. Also, we've got Peterborough versus Wickham, which Henry was just telling us about getting underway there. Uh, and we will keep you bang up to date with everything that's happening. Northampton are into the quarterfinals of the European Champions Cup. They beat Munster 24-14 at Franklin's Gardens. Ulster into the last eight of the Challenge Cup beat Montpellier 40-17. Max Verstappen cruised to victory in the Japanese Grand Prix ahead of Sergio Perez and Carlos Sainz. Lots of reaction to come on BBC Sounds with the Checkered Flag podcast. Next week on Five Live, we're at Augusta for the Masters. All the build-up throughout the week. Commentary on all four rounds of Five Live and Five Sports Extra. On Saturday afternoon, we will also be at Live at Aintree for the Grand National. Next week is a great sporting weekend, but so is this one. And and it's far from finished. A big 45 minutes. The ball's on the centre spot at Old Trafford. It is Manchester United versus Liverpool. Clinton Morrison is with correspondent John Murray. Yes, thanks, Steve. Soboslai about to uh, kick off at the start of the second half. No changes. Manchester United with Onana, Dalo, Maguire, Cambuala and Juan Bissaka. Then Casemiro, Menu and Fernandes. Garnacho, Hoyland and Rashford. And there is the whistle from Anthony Taylor. A little delay from Soboslai, who then plays it back into central defence. Liverpool, who have Kelleher in goal again. Bradley, Kwanzaa, Van Dijk and Robertson. Soboslai, Indol and McAllister. Salah, Nunez and Diaz. So no changes for Manchester United, despite the Liverpool domination, even though they're only 1-0 up. And uh, on the bench, as Unana is put under pressure by Salah and is clearing it. I think it will bounce out of play. Uh, Clinton Morrison sitting alongside me, former Republic of Ireland international Premier League goal scorer, uh, watching Liverpool come forward. And the ball played over the top, stretch from wan -Bissaka, bounces down for Maguire, who's able to hook it away from in front of Darwin Nunez's nose, actually. He had to get that right, but he did. 
and Liverpool have it on the halfway line. The, the potential changes, Clinton, for Manchester United. Mason Mount, as you mentioned in the first half, Eriksen is there, Ahmad Diallo, Anthony. You know, those are the those are the forward players. As Liverpool come forward again, it is McAllister who uh, has it centrally in slides the challenge from Casemiro, but he found his uh, intended target, Bradley. Salah plays it between two defenders, then Soboslai. Bradley will struggle to keep that in. He did keep it in, actually, and then ran off the field. Actually, no, he didn't keep it in. It's, uh, it is a goal kick to Manchester United, so we can hear from Clinton Morrison for the first time since the second half began. Yeah, I think you're right, John. The likes of, you're looking at the likes of Anthony, maybe Eriksen, Mason Mount, Diallo as well. So these are the players that you're looking maybe can come on and give them a spot, but I think Eric, Tug, Eric Ten Hag, sorry, will leave it 15, 20 minutes. See how the second half starts. As uh, Manchester United with Maguire, long ball downfield, aiming for Rashford. And Manchester United simply have to be more of an attacking force in this second half, but at the same time, try and cut off the supply line for Liverpool, which was so fruitful. And they were quite wasteful. For those who weren't listening in the first half, this could easily be 2-3 for Liverpool. Here's Manu, excellent work from him, running in from the left-hand side. But it breaks down, and Liverpool have the ball again with their number nine, the Uruguayan, Darwin Nunez, who's being chased by Bruno Fernandes. But he's managed to find the pass to Robertson, and Robertson's in the area on the left, and in comes the cross. Maguire clears, Nunez with a shot, that's blocked by the legs of the goalkeeper and uh, it was hit with some force and Manchester United have been able to, to clear it away on target from Nunez, kept out and now Rashford attacking towards the Stratford end he's round Bradley, Kwanzaa as well there Rashford still going, keeps the ball in play but then presents it to Bradley who will calmly be able to take it away for Liverpool again Yeah, to be fair, Casemiro's struggling in midfield in my eyes like all of his plays doing like he's struggling to get back and make tackle and now Salah through the middle or oh, crucial sliding interception from Kampuala otherwise that would have been all the way through for uh, Nunez and then the ball hits yeah. referee Taylor and Just, it's yeah. sorry to interrupt John frustrates me because I can see that surely Ten Hag can see that if he had a slight injury Casemiro didn't take him off don't again overrun in midfield it's like a basketball match they don't want it to be like that at the moment yeah I mean he was he did well in the opening stages of the match, Casemiro, but he was doubtful for this game. It's entirely possible. We might find out later that he's not been able to train much this week. And who knows, Casemiro might have said, with all of the injuries, look, I'll give it a go. Yeah, which I respect him for, but now you can see it. You can see someone like a Mason Mount's probably itching to get some game time. But he's struggling. Yeah, yeah. There's no question. He's almost hobbling, actually. Exactly. And you'd think that a change would have to be made. Manchester United nil, Liverpool won. This is Five Live together with the World Service. And of course, all BBC Radio is there for you on BBC Sounds if you're on the move. McAllister does well, gets the ball down, there's class in almost everything he does. And then Diaz plays the ball across the penalty area, away by Juan Bissaka, the left back as he is in this match. And uh, Liverpool in the white and green quartered shirts black shorts, white socks with the black tops against the Manchester United red, white and black Liverpool in possession with the ball on the far side Liverpool with this scoreline would go back to the top of the Premier League where they started this weekend Liverpool hoping to win the title in Jurgen Klopp's last season which would take them level with Manchester United oh it's given away by Kwanzaa United and Bruno Fernandes have said thank you very much and it's 1-1 one, one. Uh, it's a brilliant goal to be fair you can talk about the mistake from Kwanzaa but he's probably one in that Man United team that can score from there Bruno Fernandes a fantastic the way he cuts across it and I think Kelleher might have got there it's a mistake from the young boy they'll have to pick him up Kwanzaa because I think he's defended well but once he comes into that the finish from Fernandes is brilliant he's got a lot of the goal he just cuts across it John and bends it in there it's a fantastic finish from Bruno Fernandes big mistake from Kwanzaa and his game on in his second half no one was expecting that of course Kwanzaa trying to find Van Dijk and Kelleher was out of his penalty area 
you know, as most goalkeepers would be in, the, in that scenario, perhaps looking for the pass back to him. And Bruno Fernandes from inside the centre circle just had to hit it through on target. He just had to hit it on target. And the Stratford end knew they were watching it, heading towards them. They were celebrating before the ball actually crossed the line. So it's 1-1 and Manchester United have equalised. John, what do we say? We, uh, we, we did, did, what did we say? We said if you don't take your chances, you're going to get punished. And that's what's happened with Liverpool. 1-1. Now, whether that's transformed anything in this match, only time will tell. But it certainly transformed the atmosphere and um, memories flooding back of what happened here in the cup tie three weeks ago when Liverpool really should have been out of sight in the second half in that match. Here's Nunez on the right-hand side, goes round uh, Cambuala and uh, is beaten by Cambuala and then pulls him back, both hands. And it's a free kick. And again, Cambuala reacts by trying to get the crowd involved. No, well but him. they're trying to, yeah, and his players are trying to calm him down. He has to play on that emotion, the youngster. He's having a good game and he's coming to a hostile battle. I know they're trying to calm him down, but that's the best way he plays. He plays when he's up like that. And he's been good. It's been a good battle with him and Darwin Nunes. He stood up well there. Yeah, he's, he has done well. First start for Manchester United at Old Trafford. And as Clinton Morrison says, he is high on emotion as the ball is played down the left-hand side. Uh, Darwin Nunez tries to get to it, a back heel away by Cambuala. Oh, a miss, centre field by Endo, and the ball has ended up with Kobi Menu, who's running it from inside his own half, now approaching the area, gives it to Rashford on the left. Rashford now coming in field, beats two men, back to Casemiro, middle of the half. He picks out Garnacho, left foot shot, deflected, up and over. The angle of post and bar for a Manchester United corner. Wow, this is their spell. You get spells in games, and this is Man United. Liverpool will have another um, spell in this game, and they just have to not stay in the game because it's not about staying in the game. It's just Man United have, since that goal, which was gifted to them, they've lifted, and the whole place has lifted as well. Bruno Fernandes, the goal scorer for Manchester United. He's reached double figures for the season with that yet again, and uh, he is going to take this out swing out from the right. Bruno Fernandes towards the penalty spot. Maguire got his head to it, but in a crowd of players, couldn't direct it goalwards. Comes out to Rashford, right-footed ball into the air. Paul oh, Kelleher had to dive, oh. push it across the six-yard box, and then it was cleared away by Van Dijk. It's a brilliant cross, uh, cross from Marcus Rashford, and Kelleher watches that. All you need is a striker getting a cheap goal. Credit Casemiro, he just gets across him, but good hand from Kelleher, he sees it all the way. Really tricky for the goalkeeper. It was uh, whipped in Casemiro. Oh, he couldn't get a touch oh, on it. If he had, that would have been in. Yeah, it would have been in. But cleared by Van Dijk, a relieved Van Dijk. Corner from the left hand side, Bruno Fernandes. Now Dallo, square two, Garnacho. Garnacho, Manchester United are transformed. But given away that pass from Garnacho, and now Liverpool pouring forward. It is five on two. Salah, edge of the area. Now Luis Diaz, all the way across at the back post. Nunez, oh, Nunez put it right across the face of Cole. I don't he passed know. it square when he was looking to pass it in. John, and it's I, put behind for a corner. I don't know what he's doing. Either he goes for goal or he squares it back for Soboslai. It's a two yards out and he can cut it back. And he's got a tap in. But that's how the game can change, just like that. Man United dominating and li give the ball away. Got a natural. And Liverpool can just break on you. And in the end, Nunes makes the wrong decision. Should either be going for goal or cutting it back to Soboslai. It's like the cup tie all over again. It is, it is. I was going to say that. F five on two. <laughs> it, yeah. They were attacking Liverpool there with other defenders trying to get back. 1-1 the score, five live on the World Service. The corner taken into the near post by Robertson, but headed away for Manchester United. Nodded back over the top, but Casemiro's underneath that. And then uh, Kobi Menu trying to run it away. McAllister slides in with a challenge, does well, keeps it in play, gives it square. Soboslai now, Soboslai's pass cut out by a diving Wan Bissaka on the edge of the penalty area. Under bright skies now, still overcast, but all of that stormy rain has gone away. And the ball has played for it and hits That's the head of the referee. Anthony biggest Taylor. tear of the day, John. Stay on his feet, though. Uh, yeah, he did stay on his feet. He didn't get knocked out like that. Not like Paul Alcock yes, all those years ago. all those ago. years ago. <laughs> Paolo de Canio, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Here is Bradley on the right-hand side. Kwanzaa. Back to Bradley again in field. 
to Sobos Lai, back to Bradley, Bradley into the area, and then Wan Bissaka is able to come across and block that behind. He, he, you know, if Rashford plays there, he has to do his work of tracking back Bradley, John. But too many times he's switching off. It's also a 1 2, and Wan Bissaka has to come across, has to track your runners. But it's been a good response from Liverpool. 1 1 the score. Quite a second half so far. Manchester United coming up with the unlikely equaliser. Now Liverpool have recovered. In it comes from Soboslai, the corner. He was looking for Luis Diaz. It was headed away by Casemiro. Comes back to Soboslai again. The Hungarian infield for the Argentine, McAllister. And then back to the Scotsman on the halfway line. Endo, Endo, 25 yards out. Little ball to the edge of the area. Dragged back from Luis Diaz. Now to the left-hand side. Darwin Nunez under his right foot shoots that's blocked two defenders diving in headed away by Bruno Fernandes back to Darwin Nunez he's challenged comes back to Darwin Nunez again he's dispossessed by Dallo Manchester United they look to counter-attack Hoyland Hoyland can't get there Kwanzaa did and now Sobos lie once again it opens up for Liverpool he had options either side he uses Salah why not and now Sobos lie Sobos lie slips the ball to the edge of the area Bradley arriving Bradley works it back to Salah tight area Salah still going foot to foot lays it to the edge of the area McAllister with a shot that was blocked I think by Camboala in the area and then Hoyland is challenged by Kwanzaa and the ball is out of play for a throw in which has given Manchester United way well, it's certainly more competitive than it was in the first half, Clinton. And it's the most I've ever seen Ten Hag show emotion on the touchline. He's, back, he's beating his chest, he's telling his players to keep on going. And that's what you want to see from your manager. I'm not saying every manager has to do that, do that, but you want to see that sometimes from Ten Hag. It's been a brilliant second half, this has. So 1-1, Bruno Fernandes scoring that unlikely equaliser, which was his 50th Premier League goal. Bruno Fernandes has reached double figures in goals in every season that he's been here throw in for Manchester United level almost level with the edge of the the home penalty area Juan Bissaka's hit that high across the edge of the penalty area that's asking questions of Dallo who took a lovely touch. touch lovely touch to volley it forward away from Luis Diaz and then Dallo on the halfway line finds Bruno Fernandes Liverpool defenders getting back, Bruno Fernandes finds the pass to Rashford, Rashford curls it in again, lovely ball! No, just bounces all the way through to Keller. Brilliant, the, the touch from Dallo is outstanding, it's the touch of the match. To control a ball like that over your shoulder, fantastic. As uh, now Liverpool come forward again, referee says play on. Luis Diaz might have been fouled, but they've got the advantage. Sobos live, now Bradley again in the box, across from him, but a stretch from... Harry Maguire with his right foot puts that out, but Maguire is dispossessed by Bradley as he was bringing it away. Soboslai now with Salah. Soboslai, ball right across the area. Chested down, Nunez, Nunez deflection, comes back out to the edge of the area where it's scraped away by a diving Kobe Menu who, uh, who, who was just caught. He went to ground to slide it away and he was caught and that is given as a free kick to Manchester United yeah I don't think McAllister catches him I think he thinks the tackle's coming in and Taylor makes a mistake there but this game's end to end what a game and I think Man United will run out of legs and have to make substitution they put a lot into this at the moment but Liverpool are just not getting the break of it at the moment so really good game of football John yeah they've got a with all of the injuries they've actually got a 17 year old on the bench today Manchester United Harry Amas who was, who was 16 last month until his birthday so he is there I'm not sure we'll see him but um, we will see maybe one day so Manchester United won Liverpool won and Liverpool their hopes of winning the title are being dented by Manchester United with this scoreline we've got commentary coming on Sheffield United Chelsea within the hour from uh, Bramall Lane with Ian Dennis and Phil Jagielka is alongside Ian for the commentary there we'll keep you in touch with Tottenham Nottingham Forest as well which starts at 6 uh, finish Rangers 3 Celtic 3 if you missed that earlier what a commentary that was listen back to that on BBC Sounds if you like you'll find it 12 o'clock go into the stations and schedules and relive it all the uh, Checkered Flag podcast is on there as well after Verstappen's latest win this morning in Suzuka. 1 1 the score, throw in for Bradley, who had stolen too many yards there. So referee Taylor tells him to, to come back and take it again. 
with a point Liverpool would go level with Arsenal but Arsenal would stay top with seven matches to play on goal difference uh, Wan-Bissaka pulls the ball down Rashford and Wan-Bissaka still halfway inside their own half Casemiro gives it away though with a ball infield now Nunez Salah Salah back to Nunez but Manchester United men will get there first however great persistence from Nunez who turns and tries to slip it through into the penalty area and it, uh, it rolls through to Onana that chance that, that Nunez had Clinton was so uh, was, was really took me back to the the Chelsea match you know remember when he missed all of those chances yeah and it did yeah you're right where what was it like he missed like kind of three or four on the night didn't he golden opportunities as well three or four that, yeah about, about yeah I'm trying to be nice I'm trying to be nice I'm trying to be really nice I'm I'm thinking clear cut chances well I think what he did <laughs> that night might be in your mind he actually hit post or bar that's why he hit, a, he hit a post yeah four times so he yeah. did miss about 11 and hit the post it's a, it was a record it was a record John but that was a good opportunity and you think in the form because he's been in decent form yeah 1-1 uh, uh, Manchester United lose it centre field now Soboslai it's had quite an influence on the game Salah back to Soboslai in comes the challenge that's a good challenge from Casemiro even if he's not fully fit that was an excellent tackle Bruno Fernandes then finds the pass to Rashford Rashford couldn't get it past Ponzo who went to the ground but was able to get a touch out of play I think Rashford you know we've seen him only fleetingly in this game but when we have seen him I must say, he's, he's posed problems for Liverpool. Here's the man on the other side, Garnacho. Garnacho, his ball across the box is deflected onto the head of Van Dijk, who heads it down. But Manchester United win back possession. And now Casemiro to the right-hand side. And the shot on the twist from Bruno Fernandes, who tried to... A little bit like Kenny Dalglish did, I think, in a League Cup final many, many years ago, but couldn't get the contact. And now Liverpool bring it forward. Soboslai to the edge of the area. Still Soboslai to his right to Nunez. Nunez clips it across. Maguire had to get there. He did for Manchester United with his head, that big head. He got it, headed it away. Comes back to Robertson. He shoots on the fall, and that's deflected off Casemiro and out of play. And I think that's caught him amidships and he's gone down and he's stayed down and he'll take a few moments to recover Casemiro I think yeah he will Robertson's laughing but, at him <laughs> so he's got it anyway I'll let you explain um, to the listeners where he's took that John yeah the, the, old, the great Christopher Martin Jenkins always used to describe it it's, it's caught one amidships <laughs> if he was struck if the batsman was struck in the box yes in the box yeah <laughs> So uh, they'll give him a moment to recover from that. So 1-1, Manchester United 1, Liverpool 1, 6-0-6 will be on the way eventually after the Sheffield United-Chelsea commentary with Robbie Savage and Chris Sutton. Chris was at the Old Firm match today, so he'll be, uh, he'll be able to talk about that. If you're a Celtic fan, a Rangers fan, the usual number, 08 08 uh, You can read about all of the matches on the football pages of the BBC Sport website and app. Both Phil McNulty and Simon Stone are here. They'll be writing about this match. Uh, highlights tonight, BBC One on Match of the Day or anytime on the iPlayer. And then the Five Live Football Daily Podcast with all of the interviews if you don't hear them later. Throw in, which is taken eventually by Manchester United. And then Hoyland, I think, was fouled, which is just as well from Manchester United. And uh, I think we're going to see a couple of changes. Yeah, I think uh, for Liverpool and maybe a change for Man United. I see Anthony getting ready as okay, well, Joe. Yeah, Joe Gomez, Curtis Jones is going to come on. So actually, while well, uh, I think those changes will take place now, because Hoy uh, Rashford has stayed down. Rashford has got a problem. So while all this um, takes place here at Old Trafford with a score 1-1, uh, they are underway, well underway now, at Wembley in the EFL Trophy final. Henry Moran, what's the news? 20 minutes gone, Peterborough nil, Wickham nil, good open game this Wickham with the better of the opportunities, Gareth McCleary just hooking over from inside the box, Sir Alex Ferguson I'm sure keeping an eye on events at Old Trafford, keeping an eye on events here too, Darren Ferguson, his son in charge of Peterborough, goal is here. That's where he is, Clinton. Yes, he's at Wembley. He's at Wembley. Exactly. Uh, right, changes. First of all, uh, it looks as though Soboslai is coming off, he is. So Soboslai is going to be replaced by Curtis Jones, who's just back from injury. I think he would have been in the England squad reading between the lines, Curtis Jones, had he been fit last month. And Connor Bradley is going to be replaced by Joe Gomez. Bradley is, is on a yellow card in this match. And Joe Gomez, who's, who's 
had a lot of football actually started the last eight he comes on at right back and it is Rashford who's, who's off well he uh, he was only a substitute on Thursday at Stamford Bridge and it does look as though he had a, he's, he had a problem he's been able to walk off the field though but they're asking him how he is we'll just keep an eye and see no, I think he is going to take his seat in the dugout there rather than go down into the dressing room. So Anthony is on, who is, who's shown improvement, Clinton, Anthony. I must Clinton. say the pass the other night for Garnacho's goal was outstanding, Excellent. outside of the before. Uh, in the uh, Champions Cup match in the last 16, it finished Toulouse 31, Racing 92-7. Um, and Manchester United with Bruno Fernandes who is uh, he's almost part of the back line actually and he slips as he plays it forward comes off the back of Garnacho and then Endo if he'd been able to find the, the pass Manchester United might have been caught out actually they're coming forward with Menu in the centre circle Menu then pass slightly behind Garnacho on the left Garnacho then back to wan -Bissaka. back across the penalty area Menu finish Keller has got no chance get him on that play and now Jurgen Klopp making a, an immediate double change Gakpo and Elliot are coming on I mean on the, on the match that we've seen I can hardly believe this and Nunez is coming off Endo is coming off I'm not sure about taking Nunez off I'll be honest with you in a game like this Jurgen Klopp I think he's been a threat I, I'm just not sure about it well Jurgen Klopp shakes hands with Nunez and Endo as they leave the field and uh, now Liverpool well this is it Clinton this title race when we were waiting for twists and dramatic moments we've got it now right in front of us here Liverpool are going to have to come from behind which they've done effectively so many times this season but they've got to do it here at the home of their fierce rivals Manchester United I can hardly believe it on the play that we've seen. I can't believe it, but I did say to you, John, if you don't take your chances, which they're creating in the first half, Man United will have a spell, and all it takes is for a goal to get this place bouncing, and it's been bouncing in that second half. And for Eric Ten Hag on the other side of the halfway line, <laughs> what a time he's having. He's not going he's not going to have another 4-3 on his hands is he? Mm, I'm not sure <laughs> five, <laughs> no. five already this not season. over the goal scoring is not over though we, we, we will see a response from Liverpool we've that's got, for sure we've got more goals have we? yeah we've got more goals Clinton promises more goals you always seem to do that yeah yeah you yeah always, you always I, seem to be right I just feel like these, these games are just so wide open and we know what Liverpool have they have a lot of class so they're not going to throw the towel in well he has little Harvey Elliott with his curly blonde hair he was very significant wasn't he in the match in the cup tie three weeks ago scored scored the goal that we thought might have won it for Liverpool and then he was the man who lost possession wasn't he from the corner that when uh, when Manchester United went down and, and Amad Diallo scored the the goal for 4-3 so it is if you're listening in the first half and you've, you've just rejoined us you probably won't believe a scoreline of Manchester United 2 Liverpool 1 so do serious damage to Liverpool in the title race here's Diaz on the left hand side Jurgen Klopp has now made four changes isn't it Hoyland trying to win the ball back halfway inside his own half strong from Diaz that's given us a foul on the game on the Manchester United centre forward and a free kick 
two, Eric Ten Hag's side, halfway inside their own half. That was all about Anthony, he, he, and you don't really see Anthony since he's been at Man United, but he goes and closes with intensity, and once you see one player do it, John, then it follows on, and that's what he's done. They have a problem here at Liverpool, they do have a problem, this place is up. They do. Well, we talk, don't we, so often about what are they, the mark, what is the mark of a champion, the credentials of a team that can win the Premier League title. Well, this is right on the line for Liverpool. Now as Onana drags the ball back, a Cruyff turn against Gakpo, that was brave. It came off, though. Now he has Casemiro, who's still on the field. And then to the halfway line, to Anthony, back to Casemiro. Delays his pass, the groans. They wanted a first-time pass from Casemiro, he wasn't sure. Juan Bissaka, now Garnacho on the left flank, shoots, comes off the legs of the defender, Joel Gomez, and ricochets wide, took it wide of the goal for another corner to Manchester United. And we've got uh, less than 20 minutes to play here, 2-1. It is so intriguingly poised. It is. You're credit, man. this is a different Man United team that I've seen in the second half to the first half. Chalk and cheese, to be fair, and Liverpool just haven't responded in the second half. So Bruno Fernandes comes across at what stage in the first half it just seemed inevitable that there would be a second maybe a third maybe a fourth Liverpool goal now we're thinking if Manchester United score again and here's the corner that Kelleher comes and gets a, a punch on was to come off ahead of a defender last for the Stratford end or disputing it but it's given as a goal kick but now Liverpool are really on the knife edge here concede another goal and that's probably it. That's probably defeat for only the third time in the Premier League this season. Yeah, they won't get it. Won't, it won't. It, they won't give up without give, having a fight. But they will create some chances, John. They will. But you have to be careful because Man United have a really good shape. And I just feel with the Nunes one, it just gives you something different to the others where he wants to stretch him behind. Gakpo's on the left-hand side. Luis Diaz through the middle at the moment. Ball up towards Diaz, but Maguire stands up strong against him. And Manchester United clear it back to Kwanzaa on the halfway line. Kwanzaa just moving it from right to left, gives it to Van Dijk. So Liverpool were leading 1-0 at half-time, but then a mistake from Kwanzaa, who gave the ball to Bruno Fernandes, who scored from the centre circle to make it 1-1. So McAllister's pass comes off Casemiro and bounces into the path of Hoyland, and Hoyland has now got it down. He's got Kwanzaa and Van Dijk in front of him, and he's passed it to Garnacho, who shoots straight at Keller, who's able to gather the ball at the second attempt. Yeah, it's been a, it, they struggled Liverpool. They have struggled massively, um, and you got to credit Li Man United. They've just stepped onto them and just said, "We're going to press the life out of you," and it's worked. Manchester United, a team transformed in the second half. Casemiro, his pass through the inside right position, but out comes a sliding. Kelleher on his left hand side to grasp the ball at the feet of Hoyland, who was trying to race onto it. 2-1 to Manchester United. Ponza up towards Salah and then Cambuela in with a challenge on Joe Gomez. It was the ball that was there to go for. It's on the halfway line and Jurgen Klopp is, uh, has got lots to say, too much to say. He's yellow carded. Jurgen Klopp receives his, his latest yellow card and... Uh, I think he's more angry with his team. I think he's talking about his team. That's where he's having a go at some of his players and his team. He didn't like the tackle as well, but I think he's on his team as well. Because they have not they are not got going in that midfield. Since he's made the changes, they've not got going. Yeah, the ball just bounced up. Campbell had every right to go for that. But his, his foot was high, he got the ball. But it was right in front of where Jurgen Klopp was standing. So a yellow card for, for Jurgen Klopp. 2-1, Manchester United 2, Liverpool one and Liverpool here are being asked serious questions now they've been ambushed actually by they Manchester have. United shocked they are shocked three weeks ago Manchester United lulled them into a false sense of security you would say if you were being charitable and the same things happened here again <laughs> remarkable isn't it ridiculous so Liverpool have got to raise themselves. Here's Curtis Jones. Low ball into the area to Elliot. Elliot now Gakpo turned from him, but the return passes all the way through for a goal kick. Overhit it. And Elliot has to go and field the ball himself from down that slope in front of the East Stand. Yeah. 
this is what I said when Crossy asked me earlier. I, I don't put him in their top four of their, their strikers. I just I feel like I know he's got 14 goals this season, but you will score goals in a Liverpool team that create chances. These are the moments where he has to prove me wrong because I, I was surprised Nunes went off. I thought he's been a threat all afternoon. Time disappearing very quickly for Liverpool. 15 minutes to go. Liverpool would they would stay in second place. But their goal difference would be just one better than Manchester City. And Arsenal would stay tough. He has Garnacho down the left-hand side. Van Dijk comes across, hooks it away with one foot, clears it with the other. Excellent. And then Gomez, Gomez, little pass to Elliot. Elliot, then across the field it goes. Bounces into the path. Of Robertson, as he brings it forward. And then Luis Diaz takes it up on the left wing. Robertson's continued his run into the edge of the penalty area, deflects back. Luis Diaz chips it across, headed away by Juan Bissaka. Gomez shoots, deflected straight at the goalkeeper, who's able to grab it, Onana, at the second attempt. Oh, it was good. I thought the deflection, because usually that deflection um, will wrong foot you, and I think it yeah, it comes off Harry Maguire, and he's probably thinking no, but it deflects into Onana's um, path there. Maybe the Maguire look has changed. Yes. You know, it, it, it seemed like for years that would happen and it would fly into the Manchester United net of some part of Harry Maguire's body. But um, straight at Onana, who was able to grasp it. And then there's a foul on the halfway line, challenged by Hoyland on Kwanzaa. Well, it is, it is only April the 7th, but it does feel like these are big moments. Manchester United leading Liverpool. Gomez. Gomez taking on Juan Bissaka. Ball across from him. Salah with a touch. Elliot in the area. Cleared away, half away by Casemiro. Back to Salah. Salah turns it back out of the area to McAllister. 25 yards out. Square Jones. Now to Robertson. Luis Diaz with the ball at his feet. Manchester United defenders back in numbers inside their penalty area. Jones helping out Luis Diaz. Uh, they've got everyone back, Manchester United. Kwanzaa now near the centre circle as Liverpool try to recycle it out to the right-hand side. Elliot's ball in. That's headed down and away by Cambuala. And then Elliot has to volley it back to Van Dijk on the halfway line. No panic, of course, for Liverpool. They've been down this road so many times. They've won 26 points from losing positions in the Premier League this season, more than anyone else. Come back to win seven matches in the Premier League from losing positions, more than anyone else. And it is Liverpool having to do it again here. But are they going to be able to do it here at Old Trafford? Their supporters trying to do their bit. Here's Gomez on the right-hand side. Gomez against Garnacho. Then back to... Elliot, he has a look, he has the cross, left-footed, Luis Diaz, beaten in the air, good header by Dallo, comes out, Gomez again, square from Gomez, Luis Diaz with a shot, saved by Onana, oh my Salah. Word. Salah couldn't direct the follow-up on target from an angle, Maguire was there as well, but he lifted it over the angle of post and bar. It's a chance for Salah, he's missed some big chances this, um, this afternoon, and I said it hasn't been the Salah that we've seen a few months ago, obviously he had that injury, but it's a good opportunity. So, Anana makes the save and he parries it, and Salah's the first, he reacts ever so well. It's a difficult chance, but you think the standard he has, he hits the target and he blazes over. Well, Eric Ten Hag has decided that uh, with this scoreline, narrow lead against Liverpool, Liverpool coming on strong, off comes another of the forward players, Garnacho, and Amrabat, Sofian Amrabat, is, uh, is strengthening the midfield. So... Uh, so we've got Amrabat, Casemiro and Nenu in there. But then, the, you know, when you make a change like John, you invite pressure. I don't know, you still got to have a threat going the other way. So you invite pressure doing that. Well, we'll find out in the next 10 minutes plus whether that's the right decision or not. And as ever, football managers live and die metaphorically yeah. on the decisions like this that they make. But he's, he's sensed the danger down there. He feels that that move is necessary for Manchester United to win this game. So we will see. Here is Salah. Salah on the right. Little ball in field towards McAllister. Square from Gomez, but that was behind Gakpo. Manchester United with Casemiro. Of course, Manchester United 
The threat on the counter-attack, but Kwanzaa joins the attack. Gakpo's pass is a little heavy to Luis Diaz. Luis Diaz, then back to Robertson. Robertson, Curtis Jones is involved there. Still Luis Diaz again, this is in the Manchester United right-back area, and Anthony puts the challenge in. <laughs> and he turns and appeals to that like Shane Warne. <laughs> but it doesn't, it doesn't go his way. Not out, and it's a throw into Liverpool. Manchester United 2-1 up, we're into the last 10 minutes, five live in the World Service from the BBC. The drama of this Premier League title race, Liverpool facing here what would be only their third defeat in the Premier League this season. Lost at Tottenham, controversially, lost at Arsenal, now they're losing here at Old Trafford. Big defeats, could be costly. There's, uh, there's a foul by uh, Anthony and a free kick to Liverpool, halfway inside the Manchester United half Jurgen Klopp trying to trying to attract the attention of someone on the far side Liverpool with Salah Salah back to Elliot Elliot now feet quickly moving and then Gomez's cross from the right hand side cleared by Casemiro Elliot gets up wins the header Salah tries to give it back passes it straight into the body of Casemiro hopeful shouts for a handball from the Liverpool supporters at that end now Kwanzaa with a flick infield Elliot nice Salah back to Elliot Benoit, now Salah Benoit, again Benoit. yeah he's been fouled by Juan Bissaka. The challenge on Elliot brings the penalty. Anthony Taylor spotted it instantly. Down crouching, pointing to the spot. And Liverpool have a penalty and a lifeline. I knew straight away. I was thinking, we don't need to do that, Juan Bissaka. He's going away from goal. He's just giving him the opportunity there. And I just think we know he's so good at his last-ditch tackles. But it's good quick feet. It's good play from Liverpool. They sharpen it up between Salah. And yeah, he's late. He's late, Juan Bissaka. He gets none of the ball. And it's a good opportunity. Will Salah take it or will well, it be really, McAllister? Will it be McAllister who's got the ball? I think it will, Salah's hovering. Uh, Salah's, Salah's scored five penalties this season. McAllister has scored a couple recently. And, uh, and, and whether it is just McAllister as the protector, and of course we've got a stoppage here while VAR have a look at this, but surely they'll back up the decision for uh, John Brooks, the VAR. Surely it's a matter of course. And, uh, and yeah, it, McAllister gives the ball to Salah. It is going to be Salah. Liverpool have missed three penalties this season. S Salah's missed two, actually. So, uh, but in circumstances like this... Big players. Who else? Exactly. The man who scored a record 13 goals against Manchester United. It had to be him. Big moments in the title race. The wind whips around Old Trafford. Whistles from the home supporters. The ball won't stay on the spot. I think that wind is blowing it back towards Salah. That does not help, John, that does you know, not. When you know there's big pressure. 2-1 to Manchester United. This to draw the sides level. Mo Salah steps back, hands on his hips. Cool as can be. Steps out to the right. Left-footed with the penalty. Scores for Liverpool! it 2-2 and he's straight into the net Salah to get the ball back that shows you that Liverpool intend to win this game if they can of course they do 2-2 the score now Salah from the spot scoring for the 23rd time for Liverpool this season 2-2 yeah, it's a good penalty. You know what? It's a pressure penalty, John, because it's a big football match and your team needs to get back and he's taking off Colby Maynard. Oh, my word. Oh, that means what we have, we keep, because he's been probably one of the best players on the pitch, but he brings on Mason Mount. It might be just a bit of tiredness, but, yeah, big penalty from Mohamed Salah into that bottom corner. I did say, John, that substitution, you're just inviting pressure. When you're sitting back, listen, you can't compensate for Wamba Saka's poorly timed tackle, but I just thought you still should have been going forward. But Salah from the spot, sent Onana the wrong way, and 2-2 it is. Salah now 11 Premier League goals against Manchester United, 14 in 15 appearances. He is the form in their side, and he's now scored in his last six visits to Old Trafford for Liverpool. That is, that's some record. 2-2 two, two the score, and time to add... And now Liverpool in possession, the visiting supporters trying to draw their team down to this end. And that's what they're doing, Ruth Robertson with the cross, hooked away on the edge of the area, it was deflected to Anthony. Liverpool again, five minutes of the 90 to play. 
and every chance yet that there may be further goals in this match. Liverpool have got to go for it, and Manchester United will think that they can, with Hoyland, I suppose he would be the target now, and Anthony, of course, on the counter-attack. Mason Mount under the field, and, uh, and Nana, by the way, was booked for time-wasting. Uh, just before the, the penalty, so a yellow card for the Manchester United goalkeeper. Liverpool go back to the edge of the box. Kelleher with the ball at his feet. Long through the middle, Maguire comes across, got to it. Gallo heads it forward. Casemiro, looks as though he might go the distance. We wouldn't have thought that, would we? As uh, Robertson plays the ball over the top, this is for Luis Diaz to chase. Down towards the dead ball line on the left-hand side, but in slides Gallo with him. They got there together. And referee Taylor says he was able to play it onto Diaz and through for a goal kick. They both they slid off the pitch, then down that slope. You've probably slid down there, Clinton, in times past when you've been here. It's dangerous, it's John, because the, the advertising boards are there, and it's because it's a little slope there. When you're sliding and running at such quick pace, you can collide into that advertising board. Hopefully both players are, will be all right, but yeah. good defending from Dalo. He's done well against Diaz um, in the second half. It's going to take them a while. Yeah, I think they're OK, both of them. They're going to be able to continue. Uh, so we've got Sheffield United, Chelsea to come in, well, less than 15 minutes. It kicks off at 5.30, commentary here on Five Live. Uh, 6.06 later with Robbie Savage and Chris Sutton. The attendance is 73,523. Uh, and also, what you need to know is that it was Johnny Nash who recorded the original, I can see clearly, not Jimmy Cliff. No marks for Gary Flintoff. <laughs> uh, Maguire bringing the ball out from the back passes it under pressure off the field Liverpool with Gomez to take the throw three minutes to go three minutes to go Arsenal would stay top with this scoreline they'd stay top on goal difference Gomez takes the throw down into the fullback position for Luis Diaz Maguire is tight as can be he's all over the back of him then the two of them are wrestling together and uh, Maguire has something to say Luis Diaz doesn't think much of that that's out of play for only a throw in which Gomez takes back to Elliot question is is there going to be another twist in this Jurgen Klopp is being told by the fourth official Craig Porson to get back into his coaching area he's already been yellow carded in this match then McAllister, McAllister picks out a pass to Elliot on the right-hand side. Elliot then squared to Salah, little poke in field, Amrabat though in place, but Amrabat's pass has given it back to Liverpool. Elliot then squared to Salah, it feels like it's going to be all Liverpool this now in the closing stages. Unless Manchester United can nick it away, which they can, Hoyland in the centre circle, in comes the challenge from Jones, Jones again has fouled Hoyland and Amrabat, and it's a yellow card for, for Curtis Jones for a double. And a free kick to Manchester United in the centre circle, and that will relieve a bit of the pressure. Yeah, it will, and it was good play from Hoyland. I thought he could have slipped in and he made a really good run, but when your team's under pressure and can't get out, the best thing to do is buy a free kick, and that's what he's done there. Free kick in the centre circle. Free kick, Manchester United waiting to take this. Champions League commentary coming on Tuesday night, the big match in Madrid. You'll hear that with us on Five Live, live from the Spanish capital and all of the top midweek football covered. Commentary on Liverpool's match as well, by the way, against Atalanta on Thursday night. Five Live, the place to hear that. Manchester United 2, Liverpool 2. As uh, Wan Bissaka dives in, Elliot plays it through. Salah between two Manchester United men. Bruno Fernandes just got a touch on that to take it away from Salah and back to Anana who cleared. Brilliant from Bruno Fernandes. You know, like a lot of people could be, I think he's been outstanding in his second half. Not only what he offers going forward, but also tracking back because he was in there. But really good play because Maguire was out of position. We're in the 90th minute now. And there will be six minutes, about seven minutes of added time. Man United fans will groan, Liverpool fans will be happy. <laughs> Van Dijk passing it out to the left-hand side to Robertson. Infield it comes to Luis Diaz, right-footed pass from him, centre to Elliot who gets the ball down under the pitch, surface, Gomez with a cross, deflected across the area, Gakpo couldn't find Salah, scraped away by Casemiro, taken up by Robertson for Liverpool, Robertson's cross to the back post, but Bruno Fernandes was there to volley it behind, 
And it's another corner to Liverpool. Yeah, Bruno Fernandes doing his defensive duty really well. Good. But they look, they, Man United can't keep the ball. Casemiro giving the ball away there. It's all Liverpool at the moment. And that's why I question the substitutions. Maybe, I don't know if there's anyone else they could bring on. They could probably bring Ericsson on, but it's a different kind of play. He can give you fresh legs, but he can't get around the pitch. Well, this season, it's been the season of the late goal. Goals in added time. Even in the last week, Manchester United hit by them. Liverpool, Robertson with the corner to the back post. That's over everyone, but Salah is racing after it. The referee spotted a, a foul there on, presume it was Harry Maguire, because he's oh, sitting on the ground. And it's a free kick to Manchester United. There'll be another big chance in this game, John. There always is. All, you'll always get another, another big chance in the game. Bonana with the free kick for Manchester United. Goes long with it. Hoyland backs into Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa heads it forward though. Stuck his head around Hoyland. Then Elliot forward from him. Maguire nods it back to the halfway line. Elliot then hooks it in field. Maguire gets there first. And actually I think it's caught by Salah who's slid in on that. And, uh, and the ball's out of play. Maguire is saying that he needs a bit of treatment. Salah's apologising because he did slide in, it was one of those incidents where Maguire having gone in there to clear, I think it might be that Salah stood on his hand. Yeah, he catches him, he acknowledges it straight away. Yeah, and Salah apologised yeah. immediately. Throwing for Manchester United down the left-hand side, so these seven minutes of added time, we've had almost two of them, five minutes of play to go. The score, Manchester United 2, Liverpool 2. So Arsenal fans, wherever they're listening, and, of course, Manchester City supporters as well. They'd accept any dropping of points by Liverpool, which is what we're seeing here. Unless Liverpool can come up with something dramatic yet again. Here's Bruno Fernandes, a little flick from him. The back heel to Hoyland. Hoyland then couldn't get round Joe Gomez, stuck in a foot. And now uh, Cody Gatpo running the ball away from halfway inside his own half being chased and fouled. Fouled by, uh, by Mason Mount, who receives the yellow card. But conscious of the fact that Gakpo is away potentially and a, and a free kick good I'm foul they line. say they're, they're the good ones you're not going to let him run into your own your half unchallenged it's a good foul there from Mason Mark uh, half time in the EFL trophy final is Peterborough nil Wickham nil free kick taken for Liverpool Elliot Elliot into the box ball cleared away Mount was in there Wan Bissaka as well now Van Dijk again in the centre circle Van Dijk out to Robertson, Van Dijk again. Manchester United parked behind the ball. There is the prospect, of course, of breaking downfield, but like this, it looks as though they'll take a point from this match, Manchester United. Elliot, left-footed cross, long to the back post. Robertson heads it across, and then oh, Luis Diaz arriving! Just outside the six-yard box, leaning back, and has fired it over the top. And, uh, and a yellow card's been shown in there, yeah, Anthony. Because he thinks he's fouled by Robinson on, Robertson on the back post, so he's thrown it and thrown his hand in the air and gone mad at um, Anthony Taylor. But it's a great chance. It's a great opportunity um, for Diaz. I did say there would be a big chance, didn't I? I said, John, and that was it, I think. That could be it, Luis Diaz. It, what, seven yards out, stretching yeah. for it, leaning back, and sent it over the top. And, and Anthony booked for descent. Oh, it's a chance watching the replay Diaz. again. He's stretching, but you just think with the quality that Diaz has, he should be hitting the target. Rock, Anthony felt that he'd been felled, as Clinton said, by uh, by Robertson. So a yellow card for Anthony for descent. That might be it. Four minutes. Well, we've still got three minutes to go. Still three minutes to play here under the grey skies of Manchester. Liverpool, who could have been streets ahead at half-time. Manchester United led 2-1. Salah's penalty made it 2-2. Now Manchester United breaking downfield with Anthony. Anthony to Bruno Fernandes. Stretch for it. Then tried to slip the pass through back to Anthony. That was cut out by Gomez. And Liverpool, Manchester United have committed men downfield. If Liverpool can get it back down the other end, Elliot out to Robertson. Robertson brings it down, but Manchester United are back in position. Just over two minutes to go. Two minutes to go. Arsenal staying top of the league with seven matches to play. Now Elliot on the right wing. 
Elliott back to Kwanzaa on the halfway line. Kwanzaa to McAllister, who goes all the way back to, to Kelleher, who's out of the penalty area. Roundabout where he was beaten from by Bruno Fernandes for the goal that made it 1-1 just after half-time. Maguire heads forward for Manchester United. Comes down for Curtis Jones. Jones, who was being fouled by Amrabat. Free kick to Liverpool. Liverpool now urgency. Van Dijk to Gomez. Gomez's pass is beyond Luis Diaz all the way through for Anana, who's able to lean forward and scoop it up. Final moments now. 90 seconds of added time to play. Anana slips as he plays that downfield. Gomez then back to Kwanzaa, who curls it forward, but there's no one there in a white and green Liverpool shirt. Maguire, however, looking rather weary, heads it out of play inside the Liverpool half. Joe Gomez to take this. Gomez waiting for movement. Salah, little delicate touch from him. Elliot then challenged. Salah goes down, no free kick. And we're back forward to Highland. Manchester United suddenly thinking about winning it. And the ball through to Anthony. Anthony shooting the ball, but straight to Keller, who drops down onto his left to save it. It was a little bit like Amad Diallo all over again, but he couldn't find the finish. You're right, John. That was his chance to kickstart his Man United career, to score the winner here. But he's done well to win the ball back. Curtis Jones has come on and been sloppy in possession. Manchester United haven't given it up yet and we are in the final minute now the seventh minute of added time but it breaks down with Amrabat it's been kept in over there by Luis Diaz who did well and Luis Diaz now with Salah in the middle three Manchester United defenders back this could be the last chance Luis Diaz is then oh, that's a foul. on the wrong end of a foul by a very tired Casemiro who just rolled into him and it's going to be a free kick for Liverpool He's done excellent, Diaz. I thought the ball was out of play, but... He, and you know what? It's even his teammates did, because they couldn't get up. The only one who was up with him was Salah. But this is it, John. This, this is, is it. it. <laughs> this is it. This is it. If Liverpool want to match Manchester City and Arsenal of yesterday and win away, Liverpool, who still have to go to Goodison Park. Arsenal have still got to come here, That's what mind I mean. you. They have a big say, the Man the United. Season. They have a big say. They do. So it is a free kick, in a good position. McAllister and Robertson, I think this will be the last chance. Robertson to take it, high into the box, headed away by Manchester United. Elliott with the shot, but it's straight on Anana, who's able to drop down under one knee and field it and hold it. And there it is, that's the final whistle. And Eric Ten Hag and Jurgen Klopp shake hands. That is probably it in terms of... Jurgen Klopp, the end of his rivalry as the Liverpool manager with Manchester United. 2-2 draw, drop points. The second draw in the last four matches for Liverpool and Arsenal stay top of the table. But Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp must be thinking, how did we not win that? 1-0 up at half-time and they've ended up drawing 2-2. Yeah, yeah, they'll be disappointed, but in the end, you take the point, you move on. It might not be a bad point. Man United have still got to play um, um, Arsenal. They still they st still have a big say in this um, title race, to be fair. And where, the circumstances where they, Liverpool, even in the end, they could have won it. Even Harvey Elliott there with the volley. If that, if he hits that, if he mishits that, it's because he hit it so sweet, it's straight out of Nana. But it's a proper football match. It's a really good end to end. And credit Man United. I thought in the second half they were outstanding. Just got tired legs, and Liverpool showed their class and managed to get an equaliser. So yeah, they'll be disappointed they didn't get the three points, but. Liverpool are still massively in this title race. Yeah, 28 shots was the, the Liverpool number today. 28 attempts on the Manchester United goal. But um, entertaining, dramatic, swung one way, then the other. Manchester United somehow got themselves into a winning position. But that penalty, the late penalty from Mo Salah, means that both league matches between Manchester United and Liverpool have ended as draws this season. And Arsenal are top with seven matches to play. Manchester United 2, Liverpool 2. One point separates the top three in the Premier League. Arsenal 71, Liverpool 71, Manchester City 70. They've all played 31 matches. Clinton Morrison, if Liverpool are wondering how didn't we win that, the answer is that's what happens when you suffocate a team, but you don't finish them off. Yeah, you don't take your chances, you don't win football matches. And we never say that um, with Liverpool because they've been outstanding this season. And, you know, they, they created a lot of chances in that first um, first half. They have a good save from Anana. Final pass or final cross wasn't good enough. 
half. But as I said, from where Liverpool were in the second half, they even could have still gone on to win it. Diaz has a golden opportunity. Harvey Elliott there at the end. So you, it's, there'll be ups and downs. You know, like all teams, I think, will drop points from now to the end of the season, Crossy. Maybe not Man City, you could probably see going unbeaten, but Arsenal are in the driving seat at the moment, but there's still a long way to go. A huge moment that for Kobe Mainu. His first goal at Old Trafford reminded me of Federico Makeda back in the day for Manchester United. Ran to the same corner to celebrate. Yeah, he did. This young man's got the world at his feet. He's level-headed. He looks like he's calm. You know, he's composed and, and his goal was outstanding. And I thought he had a quiet game in midfield they were getting overrun but in that second half he was the one who grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck him and Bruno Fernandes an outstanding the finish is majestic from Kobe Mane he liked the winning goal he scored against Wolves fantastic young player and his future is bright with him there's also an argument that Manchester United didn't in the end take full advantage of the gift that they were given and I'm not talking about the Kwanzaa pass where Fernandes produced that brilliant finish but leading as they were that tackle from Wan-Bissaka for the penalty that's a daft challenge yeah he'll be disappointed and we see him loads of times Wan-Bissaka he usually times them tackles excellent that's why they say he's one of the best one-on-one -on -one defenders in the Premier League but he, I think it's just tired legs tired minds with him and he just lunges and he doesn't need to lunge because Harvey Elliott's kind of away from goal he's not going into danger so he'll look at that and say it was a, a big mistake at a crucial time where Man, I mean, yeah, Man United were holding on but Liverpool were pushing